watch TV, don't read magazines, don't even listen to NPR. Create your own. Saturday morning cartoon Max out. We have joined you for Easter Sunday. And just like last year, we have put together a wonderful lineup. There's only a couple of repeats. The rest are all brand new shows for Easter. Easter specials from the time that we remember watching them. And there's even one on there that I haven't really seen before that I remember. I remember seeing it on the commercials, but I never saw it in real life. So we want to wish all of you wonderful Max Squad people a very happy Easter or Passover or whatever it is that you celebrate at this time of year. Maybe you just celebrate the spring solstice and that's okay too. We are just here to celebrate it with you and to bring you a bunch of awesome, wonderful, this time of the year specials. So, yizzle, what is it that these fine people need to do with themselves before we get started? What? And make sure that you get some colored eggs in that breakfast. Eat them up. I like boiled eggs. And stay with us right here from 8 a.m. No, not today. From 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I lied again because it's not 4 p.m. It's more like 4.45 because we don't have a closer. We're running straight through and this is the only time you're gonna see us. We're not gonna come back because we have some family time to do, just like I'm sure all of you do too. But make sure that you spend it together. You watch this with someone you love and celebrate this fine time of the year with us right here on the only place that you wanna be on holidays to watch the holiday specials. <gasps> Saturday morning, back to Surprised to see me here instead of Santa Claus? Well, I can't say that I blame you since it is Christmas here. Me? Just call me GB for now. Yep, I'm back in time many Christmases ago. And right there in that very house is where our story begins, the story of the first Easter rabbit. And you know, we came within a hair's breadth, if you'll excuse the pun, of never having an Easter rabbit at all. Don't remember, do you? You know all about Christmas and Christmassy things. Like how Santa came to be, Frosty, and Rudolph who guided the sleigh. But how about that rabbit who comes every Easter day Easter train. I'm an old friend of the Easter Bunny. 
Lots of friends are helping the Easter Bunny deliver his Easter goodies this year. But there are others out to stop him. That train must never get over Big Rock Mountain. The Easter Bunny is determined to get through, no matter what stands in his path. Today at 5.30 on 19. Easter's coming, bringing a treat. A Cadbury favorite, something you eat. Cadbury's Easter cream eggs. Nothing else tastes anything like them. Cadbury's milk chocolate makes up the shell, rich cream of vanilla, and the most delicious golden candy yolk any egg ever had. They're in the stores now, but they won't be long. Just until Easter, then they'll be gone. Cadbury's Easter cream eggs. You can get them wherever you buy candy bars. But just until Easter. See that little guy with a sprig of holly in his stuffed paws? That's one special rabbit. Though I admit, he may not look like it right now. He was a Christmas present for a little girl named Glinda. Oh, Mommy, I love him. Thank you. I love him. I'm glad, dear. You'll have to think of a name for him. I will, but for now I'll call him Stuffy. Oh, look, it snowed last night. Can I go outside now, please? Yes, dear, but be sure to bundle up. Meanwhile, in the nearby woods, a trio of real live rabbits were hatching a ridiculous caper. Now, let me get this straight. We're gonna dig a long tunnel under all the carrot patches in the neighborhood while nobody's around. And when spring comes, we're gonna come back and steal the carrots from underneath. Totally undetected. We come not, friends, to steal your hearts, but your carrots. You've now met Spats, Whiskers, and Flops, three of the slickest con bunnies around. Alas, my men, behold that silly-looking rabbit sitting over there. Hey, look, he's strange. He hasn't got any hind legs. <laughs> His odor is unsniffable, undetectable. He ain't a rabbit at all. He isn't real. But I am real. I am. I am. Poor Stuffy. He knew he wasn't real like the other rabbits, and that made him very unhappy. But he was Glinda's favorite toy, and as the months passed, so did his sadness, because he was loved. But one day something happened that was to affect everybody's life. Little Glinda took ill. I'm afraid it's scarlet fever. Oh, dear. My poor little girl, what can I do? Well, the first thing is to burn all of the bedclothes. And oh, yes, that old stuffed rabbit. Burn it all at once. Now, taking away a child's favorite toy is no easy matter. And how would she ever explain to little Glinda that Stuffy had to be... Well, you know, even I hate to say it. Oh, dear, it's getting late. I think I'll leave all this for burning tomorrow. Our rabbit friend thought to himself, what's the use of being loved if it all ends like this? Who, who are you? My name is Calliope. I take care of all the playthings that the children have loved. And when they're old or worn out, <laughs> then I come and take them away with me and turn them into real. Why? Wasn't I real before? You were real to the little girl who loved you, and now you should be real to everyone. Stuffy was mystified, but he hadn't heard the most important part. Now that you are real, I have a special mission for you. You have been chosen to be the first Easter rabbit. But why me? I'm nobody. And why do we need an Easter rabbit? A good question, wouldn't you say? But Calliope had a good answer. She explained to Stuffy why all the holidays of the year needed symbols to help people remember them. Springtime needs someone to remind all the children of her special holiday. They could form the lovely habit of saying Easter's here cause there's that rabbit. There's that
that rabbit Taking some blue from the sky There's that rabbit Mixing a buttercup dye There's that rabbit Painting his green everywhere A magical hair That rabbit There's that rabbit Helping the spring do her tricks There's that rabbit Chiseling chocolate chicks There's that rabbit Far from your typical jack Each year he'll be back That rabbit Needs a little old me. <laughs> There's that rabbit. There's that rabbit playing his egg rolling game. There's that rabbit. There's that rabbit. Everyone's calling his name. There's that rabbit. There's that rabbit. Easter's his garden to tend. Our cottontail friend. That rabbit. To begin, you must go to Easter Valley, where the golden Easter lily blooms, and it's always springtime. It's over the hills, to the west of the sun, and beyond the third mountain. <laughs> But now someone will show you the way. Easter is only two weeks away, so hurry, 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 hurry. But beware, beware of zero. zero, 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 zero. But who? <laughs> How? Oh, wait, don't, don't go. I have so many questions. Think I'll begin with a hop. He's coming around just a nasty bump on the noggin. What's your handle, kid? My name? It's, uh, it's... Gee, I, I almost forgot. <laughs> I'm the new Easter rabbit. Boy, he's a dilly, isn't he? And uh, where were you hopping to so madly? I'm off to find Easter Valley, where the golden Easter lily is. And, hmm, golden Easter lily, eh? <laughs> Excuse us for a moment. Since you're obviously not in the best of health, my companions and I feel it our duty to accompany you on your journey. Gee, that's great. Let's get started. Zero, 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 zero. But beware of zero? What was that? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. But it was something indeed, for the Easter rabbit had remembered Calliope's warning about zero. Bruce? Bruce? I'm coming! Ooh, ooh, zero! Bruce? What have you found out about the road into Easter Valley? Did the elves know anything? Not a thing, not a thing! I give up! You see, Zero and Bruce were in charge of keeping the North Pole nice and white. Everything was all lovely and covered with snow, except Easter Valley. Zero had never been able to find the secret road into Easter Valley, and so it stayed green all the year long. We can't give up, Bruce. We just can't. There has to be a way. <laughs> Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. You're looking at a very unusual kind of egg from Cadbury that's only around till Easter. Its shell is pure, rich Cadbury milk chocolate. But look, inside sits a sweet, creamy yellow yolk surrounded by delicious white filling. Cream eggs from Cadbury. Why, they're the best thing to come along since the Easter Bunny. And when he's gone, they're gone. 
lot of love and care goes into making Easter baskets fun for your loved ones. And Care Bears can make them even more fun because a Care Bears tummy shows just what you're feeling in your heart. Tender heart, Bear. Oh, Grandma's the best Easter basket I ever got. Cheers, bedtime and friends. They're my favorite Care Bears. And your grandma's favorites, too. Care Bears are each sold separately. Give one to someone special this Easter and share your special feelings of love. Well, by the time our friends had reached the third mountain, they were totally exhausted and ready to turn back. Say, it seems that bird is indicating a direction to follow. What have we got to lose? Someone will show you the way. She's leading us away from the wall. If you ask me, we're barking up the wrong tree. What do you think, Flops? I'd say we were barking up the wrong tree. The tree. It must be hollow. Why doesn't one of us give it a try? I shall be as expeditious as possible, okay? And be quick about it, too. Hmm, if my calculations are correct, he should reach the other side just about now. I am calling you. <laughs> Hang in there, Flops. We're coming over. Everything you could imagine was there. And one person who seemed downright out of place, Santa Claus. <laughs> Just trying to be neighborly. You see, I'm all finished with my job, and I had a little spare time, so I thought I might be able to help you get started. But we'll never be able to do the job in time. There are so many boys and girls all over the world, and we only have a few weeks. Well, why not pick just one small town for a test? And then next year you can tackle them all. That's what I did first time out. Great idea, Santa. And I know just the town. Excuse me for buttoning into the festivity, Santa, but what's in it for us? Giving presents is a talent. One that the three of you have obviously never had a chance to explore. Why not try it just once, hmm? You can start by giving just a little gift of love to a child. You'll be surprised at how much you'll get back in return. You won't regret helping me, fellas. Uh, just one thing, Santa, sir. Is he really the first Easter Rabbit? <laughs> well, indeed he is, Spats. Now I must be off. Blitzen, good luck. <laughs> good luck. Well, they've gone and done it, Bruce. Somehow they've managed to get into Easter Valley. And they're bound to find the golden lily. We've got to find a way in. Crafty old Zero knew one thing that no one had bothered to tell the new Easter rabbit, that the golden Easter lily kept the valley warm and green all year long. If it were to disappear, springtime would disappear with it. so glum, chum. Oh, it's nothing. It's just that I've been thinking about little Glinda again. How is she, Doctor? She's sleeping now. She's going to be just fine. Oh, thank you, Doctor. That's, that's the best thing I could hear. Oh, I forgot. She seems to be mumbling something about somebody called Stuff or Stuffy or something. Oh, he was her favorite toy. <laughs> A silly old stuffed rabbit. Oh, well, I'm sure she'll forget about it in a few days. Now, you spend a little time looking after yourself for a change. Goodbye, Doctor, and thank you. Stuffy, oh, Stuffy, you've come back, you've come back. Linda, what are you doing out of bed? And what was that noise I heard in here? Oh, Mother, it was Stuffy. He came back, he came back, and he was really real. And there's going to be a parade and everything on Easter Sunday. Come now, dear. Let's get back into bed. 
And I'm going to wear my new pink dress and my new straw bonnet that you got me. Mother, all of my clothes, where are they? Glenda's mother had no choice but to tell her the truth. Don't cry, Mother. Who needs silly old parades anyway? Oh, darling. Oh. <laughs> It's that tree down there. It must be hollow. Ooh, ooh. Uh, that's the way into Easter Valley. I'm sure of it. Excellent, Bruce. Excellent. <laughs> Tomorrow, Bruce. Tomorrow will be the end. The end of Easter Valley. <laughs> We'll be right back with more Saturday Morning Cartoon Max out after these messages. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, at Core Hill, it really doesn't matter. I'm Cookie Chick. That's right, Cookie Chick. And both the chocolate-covered egg and myself are custom-decorated Carvel ice cream cakes made fresh daily at participating Carvel ice cream stores for Easter. Now, would you like to send one to a friend? Please call the toll-free number that you see listed here, and we honor most major credit cards. Thank you. Well, the next day was Saturday, the day before Easter Sunday. I think we shall have a white Easter, if my eyes do not deceive me. A white what? Hey, look, it's beginning to snow. Yeah, it's really coming down. Now, now I've got it all. <laughs> the valley and the golden lily are mine. Gee, Zero, are you just gonna leave them snowed in like that? Ooh, ooh, they may never get out. Bruce? Who cares? <laughs> Let them all freeze for all I care. <laughs> Bruce was beginning to have second thoughts about what they had done. Bruce decided there was only one thing left for him to do. So he rolled Getting fatter by the minute. It's as if someone out there doesn't like us. Oh, uh, oh. it's, it's uh, stuck. The snow must be up to the roof. I can't budge it an inch. Santa, Santa, ooh, ooh, uh, I gotta speak to you. Bruce told Santa the situation, and Santa knew what he had to do. Ahoy down there! Come on up, it's me, Santa Claus! Santa Claus! I know what's happened. Bring everything up the chimney and begin loading the sleigh. They loaded all the eggs and baskets and bonnets onto the sleigh, and just as it was getting dark, they had finished and were on their way. He came! Stuffy was here! Mother, mother, look! And there's a note with mine. It says, don't forget our date, Main Street and 5th Avenue at 12 noon sharp. Well... Morning, Elizabeth. Why, good morning, Doctor. We didn't expect you today, being it's Easter Sunday and all. <laughs> Jonathan, please. And this is not a professional call. I brought these for you and Glinda. Uh, Jonathan, you shouldn't have. Oh, it's beautiful. Can I try it on, Mother? Oh, of course not. Now hurry. Uh, the parade starts at noon. The news is all over town. But uh, how did you know we needed... <laughs> A little bird told me. <laughs> <laughs> Never saw you look quite so pretty before. 
never saw you dressed quite so lovely. What's more, I could hardly wait to keep our date this lovely Easter morning. And my heart beat fast as you. Bonnet with all the frills upon it, you'll be the grandest lady in the Easter parade. I'll be all in clover, and when they look you over, I'll be the proudest fellow in the Easter. On the avenue, on the avenue, Fifth Avenue, Fifth Avenue, the photographers will snap us, and you'll find that you're in the rota gravure. Oh, I could write a sonnet about your Easter bond and of the girl I'm taking to the Easter. Miserable roly poly snitcher. When I get my hands on you, I will melt you down to a tennis ball. You will do nothing. I'm warning you, Zero. Either you put the golden Easter lily back in the valley so that springtime can come back, or I'm moving out of the pole. I've got a good offer from the South Pole, you know, and I've been considering it. You'd leave me all alone here? No elves, no Sunday night dinner with Mrs. Claus's home cooking and those little noodles. Oh, no midnight rides with the reindeer. Just me all alone here by myself. By myself. <laughs> What good is all of this? What? Is anything without friends to share it? <laughs> I'd even miss Bruce. Oh. <laughs> hey, who's that? Me? I'm Zero. Sorry to drip and run, but this weather is bad for my health. Bye. And, and, and oh yes, Happy Easter. Gee, he doesn't seem like such a bad guy. I wonder what all the fuss was about. Well, at least this time we've got a year's start. Our whiskers? Right you are, GP. So you found me out at the very end. That's right, I was stuffy. Many, many years ago, that is. And so the Easter lily brought eternal spring with it. The chickens could lay their eggs and the world would know that next year and every year I'd be back again. Happy Easter!
Stay tuned, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. Funding for this program is made possible by a grant from the people at Chevron and support of public broadcasting in your community. Oh, what a great day for a picnic. A picnic, a picnic! Bear Country, friends, as any observer can plainly see, is a really and truly fine place to be. Especially for cubs and other small fry, baby robins learning to fly, young frogs and bunnies learning to hop, all kinds of young'uns, and every spring season, another new crop. Except that one Easter time, when the cycle of seasons came to a screeching, grinding, sudden stop. Let us turn back the clock to when Brother was the only cub on the block. When the bear's treehouse wasn't nearly so grand, and a very strange thing occurred in bear land. No one really knows the cause. A shift, perhaps, in the natural laws. Some unfortunate bit of cosmic bad luck. But somehow that winter, the seasons got stuck. What happened to spring? Where did it go? Had it all been called off on account of snow? And Easter, what about Easter? Would it skip a year? Could Easter somehow disappear? very unusual kind of egg from Cadbury that's only around till Easter. Its shell is pure, rich Cadbury milk chocolate. But look, inside sits a sweet, creamy yellow yolk surrounded by delicious white filling, cream eggs from Cadbury. Why, they're the best thing to come along since the Easter Bunny, and when he's gone, they're gone. Everybody, strike up the band for the Allen's Easter Parade. <laughs> yes, Easter's on its way. And it's time for Allen's famous chocolate bunnies, roosters, ducks, and Easter eggs. Allen's have been making wholesome confections for over 50 years, the good old-fashioned way, from pure milk chocolate. Easter morning, treat your family to the scrumptious taste of Allen's. Look for me on the package. <laughs> Only Allen's has the Easter bunny right in its name. M&M's chocolate candies. The milk chocolate melts in your mouth, not in your hand. Thank you, Bunny! Easter's coming, bringing a treat. A Cadbury favorite, something you eat. Cadbury's Easter cream eggs. Nothing else tastes anything like them. Cadbury's milk chocolate makes up the shell, rich cream of vanilla, and the most delicious golden candy yolk any egg ever had. They're in the stores now, but they won't be long. Just until Easter, then they'll be gone. Easter cream eggs. Ooh. You can get them wherever you buy candy bars. But just until Easter. It's almost spring again. And you know what that means. <laughs> Only Cadbury's Easter cream eggs have a thick shell of Cadbury's milk chocolate. <laughs> On the inside, the creamy yellow yolk is surrounded by a delicious white filling. <laughs> and for an exciting little change, now there's new Cadbury's bunnies in either solid dairy milk or caramel-filled caramel. No bunny knows Easter like Cadbury. 
It's the fall of that winter when the seasons got stuck. Bear Country's still having very good weather luck. Take Papa his lunch, my dear. He's chopping wood at the edge of the forest. Yes, Mama. As any observer can plainly see, Bear Country is still a great place to be. A great place to spend your growing up time. There are puddles to jump, all shapes and sizes of trees to climb, plants that catch flies, grasses that whistle, Ouch! the lesson you learn, packing into a thistle. So much to do and see and know. A wonderful place in which to grow. But, and here's the rub, a little bit lonesome for an only cub. All brother had friends, the gang who hung round down by the bog. There was Bill Bunny and Finity Frog. His idea of excitement was sunning himself on old rotting log. Ribbit. Ribbit? And there wasn't very much on Fred Firefly's mind, but working the switch on his electric behind. As for Bill Bunny, there just was no stopping his rabbity habit of hippity hopping. Bill! Bill, come back! Brother kept busy trying to learn what life was about. There really was quite a lot to find out. I've many, many questions to ask. Oh, questions? Questions? Hi, Papa. I brought you your lunch. <laughs> On questions of why, who, what, when, and where, ask the world's foremost expert, me, Papa Q Bear. Well, well, my first question, Dad. Go ahead, ask it. Don't stammer, my lad. Well, well my question, Dad. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, ask it. Don't just stand there hemming and hawing. Well, Papa, why are you standing on the limb you are sawing? <laughs> that, that was a very good question. Do you have any more? It's one of the things uh, Papas are for. I have many questions. There's so much I need to know. Where do we come from? Where do we go? How does the sun shine? Why do rivers flow? Those questions are too easy. They're just not tough enough. I'm prepared to deal with much more challenging stuff. I know all the answers. The who, what, why, and where. Just as sure as my name is... Oh. Pop you bear. In the middle of a river, how deep does it get? Do fishes get thirsty? Why is water wet? Where does your lap go when you stand up? How many liquid ounces in the buttercup? You may ask me any question, no matter how far out. Being open to all questions is what parenting is all about. I know the census of Samoa. And this principal crop, the height of Krakatoa. Before it blew its top, I have all the answers. The who, what, why, and where. Just as sure as my name is. Oh, the barbecue pot. Uh, the Brother kept asking questions as the seasons progressed. Why do leaves change color in the fall? Why do they, huh? And why do we have seasons anyway? In fact, he became a bit of a pest. What makes the snow and hail? Yes, whatever and the season, Bear Country was fun. But it was a bit lonesome being Mama's and Papa's only small son. As for the gang down by the bog, Bill Bunny and Fred and Finity Frog, well, as the old saying goes, when fair weather ends, you can say goodbye to fair weather friends. 
Only Bill Bunny came venturing out to see what winter was all about. Hey, wait for me! Bill, wait up! It was a strange sort of winter. Gloomy and gray. And somehow it seemed to have come to stay. Papa was worried. Something's gone wrong. This winter is hanging on much too long. He looked at the papers. Hmm. He turned on the TV. He checked every reference book in the tree. Hmm. Something's gone very wrong. It's more than bad luck. What is it, Dad? Well, somehow or other, the seasons got stuck. Seasons stuck? What a suggestion. What about spring? <laughs> and Easter. What about Easter? What's Easter, Papa? What's Easter? What's Easter? Easter is... Delicious tastes, yummy smells, coconut eggs with chocolate shells, colored eggs in paper grass, treats for every lad and lass, rainbow colored jelly beans, reds and yellows, pinks and greens, sweets and treats of every kind. There's no telling what you may find. Molasses, mocha, treacle, honey, and best of all, the Easter Bunny. Now, Papa Bear, if you please, you can't see the forest for the trees. And while I don't deny those things are fun, Easter means much more, my son. It's a new beginning, the warm sun melting, snow and ice, bringing forth crocus, tulips, Edelweiss, drawing new life from the cold winter earth. Baby robins, the miracle of birth. A great rainbow after a warm spring rain. What's a miracle, Mama? Son, a miracle is something wonderful we cannot explain. And this Easter, said Mama, looking into Brother's eyes. You'll have an extra special Easter surprise. And that moment, whoops, Brother slipped off Mama's lap. Was Mama's lap getting smaller? Or was it just that Brother was getting taller? Or even a little of both, perhaps, which is often the way with cubs and laps. What happened to Mama's lap? <clears throat> Come, it's time for Boss Bunny to wiggle his ears. It had been custom in bear country for years and years for Boss Bunny to signal spring by wiggling his ears. We can count on Boss Bunny. He wouldn't let anything happen to spring, and certainly not Easter. Easter's his thing. But when they reached the accustomed spot, a crowd had gathered, but Boss had not. Not a sign of Boss Bunny, not a wiggle nor wit, except a small one saying, Boss Bunny has quit. Boss Bunny has quit? What about Easter? <laughs> Said Brother, with tears in his eyes. Well, what about my Easter surprise? The resignation of Boss Bunny was a very serious matter. The citizens of Bear Country were a buzz and a chatter. I hear he had a problem with fermented carrot juice. Outrageous. Disgraceful. Simply no excuse. Retired. Opted out. Hopped a freight. Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. M&M's chocolate candies. The milk chocolate melts in your mouth, not in your hand. Thank you, buddy! Boop, boop. What you doing? Mom's helping to call the apes of the 
pods used to write color kits. Look at all this stuff. You drop a color tablet into vinegar and water, then dip a hard-boiled egg. Ready. Hey, this is fun. <laughs> when it's dry, I like to rub on cotton the rabbit. I like to keep my eggs in the egg holder. I like to put my name on mine. Which way do you like them, Jamie? Scrambles. <laughs> <laughs> Pa's Easter Egg Color Kit comes with everything seen here. Hey, Dudley Rabbit here. Easter's almost here, so hurry up with those eggs. Hi, I'm Clara Clucker. Dudley asked me to tell all you moms about his new improved shaken egg. It makes Easter eggs that are downright egg siding. <laughs> Get it? Well, come on, Mom, I'll show you. Just pour Dudley's dazzling new Dymex into the shaker bag. Now dip a hard-boiled egg in warm water, put it in the bag, and just shake away. Oh, isn't that fun? Oh, and here's what's new. Dudley's new formula dies and dries instantly, right in the bag. Have you ever seen such wonderful colors? So, Mom, take it from me, Clara Clucker, and this year get Dudley's own shaken egg, the better-than-ever way to color Easter eggs. And look for Clara Clucker's Happy Easter Egg, the colorful giant blow-up egg with pictures of me and all my Easter friends at fine stores everywhere. Save on fashion activewear for spring during the Easter sale at Target. Save 30% on active tops and bottoms for men, women, and juniors. Target sale price from $5.59 to $13.99 apiece. And save 30% on fashion tops and shorts for boys and girls. Sale price from $4.19 to $6.99 apiece. Target, we've got the look, we've got the price. Spring activewear for the whole family. 30% off during the Easter sale at Target. Papa was especially down in the mouth. Who will bring our jelly beans? Our reds and yellows? Pinks and greens? My Easter surprise. What might it have been? A giant Easter egg in a decorated tin? A basket of yellow marshmallow chicks? A lifetime supply of lemon sticks? Mama just smiled and gave a small shrug. Reached down and gave brother a mama bear hug. <laughs> There must be some way of changing our luck, of saving Easter and getting the seasons unstuck. And at that very moment of despair and desperation, <laughs> Papa Bear was struck by a full-fledged inspiration. Say, talk about your Easter surprise. Just try this one on for size. I'll be the Easter Bunny. You'll be the Easter Bunny? I'll be the Easter Bunny. I can do it, my dears. The first thing I'll need is slightly bigger ears. When some nice long whiskers, these broom straws will do. Fasten them in place with bunny whisker glue. Now let's twitch my whiskers, train my ears to flop. And now a bit of practice on my bunny. Hop, hop, hop! If you want something done, then do it yourself. Just take your up and let them down off the shelf. Put your muzzle to the grindstone and do it yourself. If you want something done, hop a dump, hop a dump, hop a dump, you've got to do it yourself. Now the next thing we'll need is a ready egg supply and six or seven packets of Easter egg dye. Some practical arrangement of scrap, lumber, and planks to direct the egg supply into the mixing tanks. While yours truly stands ready to stir it with a mop. And now another bit of practice on my bunny. Hot, hot, hot! If you want something done, then do it yourself. Just take your spit and polish down up the shelf. Smear yourself with elbow grease and do it yourself. If you want something done, hop 
it up, pop it up, pop it up. You've got, got to, to do, do it yourself. And now the shredded coconut, the chocolate and cream. <laughs> Who cares if old boss money ran out of steam? Then an extra nail or two and one more rubber band. <laughs> now one last connection. Here, son, give me a hand. Now all that's left to do, as you can plainly see, is hook the whole thing up to my good old bottle tea. It's working! It's working! It's not working. There was much on the mind of small brother bear. And as he pondered the questions of who, what, why, and where, who should come hopping over the hill but Brother Bear's friend, Bunny Bill. Now it was Bill who wanted to play. Hi, Brother Bear. Want to play? Sorry, Bill. I just can't today. I've got too much on my mind. And there's somebody very special I simply have to find. Somebody very special? Who's that, Brother Bear? The boss of all the bunnies. The one and only Easter Hare. Then Bill said something that caused Brother's jaw to drop. No problem. Come with me. Boss Bunny is my pop. What a piece of luck. He's the one who could save Easter and help the seasons get unstuck. Then Bill led Brother through a secret trap door that no bear had ever entered before that led to a secret underground room. It was dark and deserted and quiet as a tomb. There was nothing in the room except some mice. A bushy-tailed example of genus Catus Catus. <coughs> and Boss Bunny's vast collection of Easter apparatus. There were buckets, belts, and vats in a great assembly line of fantastic machines of remarkable design. Great jelly bean machines capable of making a million jelly beans. Devices that could write any child's name. What a waste, said Brother. What a crying shame. For Boss Bunny's Easter factory was deserted, dark, and still. The signs and sounds of Easter were absolutely nil. Just up ahead, there was a funny little door with a narrow crack of light showing at the floor. In the room behind the door, reclining on a shelf, was the erstwhile Easter Bunny, Boss Bunny himself. Huh? Huh? Uh, what? All right, Sonny. State your business. Spit it out. What's this intrusion all about? It's... it's about Easter. And spring. Uh, who cares about Easter? And spring is a bore. Who cares about Easter? And spring is a bore? Do you have any idea of just how long I've managed Easter and kept the seasons moving along? But please. Twitching my whiskers, wiggling my ears. Why, it's undignified for someone of my golden years. Do you have any idea what it means to make 10 million jelly beans? And the bunny help you get today. They want salary breaks, vacation pay, <laughs> the paperwork, the regulations, the egg supply, the aggravation, not to mention aches and pains. Yeah. I've got arthritis, bursitis, mixer's elbow, sinusitis, I'm old and crabby, bent and stooped, I'm P double O P E D, pooped. But please, we need Easter and spring. No Easter and spring? Why, that would ruin everything. Look, I'll say it again as I've said it before. Who cares about Easter? 
handspring is a bore. I'm fed up to here, and I'm not gonna take it anymore. Not gonna take it anymore. But, Mr. Bunny, we need eastern spring. We need a warm sun, melting snow and ice. All that Easter hocus pocus, about daffodils and crocus. Tulips, crocus. Starts my body aching and my teeth are hurting. Head away. So stop your begging and your blurting. My decision to resign is absolutely firm and sir. Drawing new life from the cold winter earth. Baby Robin's the miracle of birth. Who cares about Easter? And spring is a bore. Hold on now. Now, just a minute. Somehow that rainbow got through to Boss Bunny. The great spring rainbow's lovely light touched his heart and put things right. It straightened his back. It loosened his joints. It reduced his aches and pains by 12 percentage points. His ears began to wiggle. His whiskers began to twitch. Then Boss Bunny reached around and pulled the master switch. All right, you bunny. It's Easter time, so hop to it! Please get all that Easter. Look forward to spring. Then go the new heights to the joy that they bring. Easter morning, Brother opened his eyes, stretched, and remembered his Easter surprise. Oh, Brother, come in here, please. There is something you must see. Jelly beans, a chocolate egg, and bunny. It was all three. The Easter bunny brought those, my dear. Your special surprise is over here. Brother, meet your new baby sister. What was in the basket was a baby, a little baby bear. Brother was so surprised, all he did was stare. Then, as he reached to touch her tiny little toes, her small fist accidentally popped him on the nose. Say, for a tiny little baby, she has quite a punch. And as he rubbed his nose, he knew. It was more than just a hunch that something wonderful had happened, that he wouldn't be lonesome anymore, that his extra special Easter surprise was well worth waiting for. Pa, I have one more question. <laughs> you may ask me any question, said Papa Bear to Brother. The baby. Where did the baby come from? Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> that one's for your mother. Remember about the robins and the miracle of birth? Mama, you got your laugh back. Interrupted brother. And mother had. Please care about Easter. Look forward to spring. And open your heart to the joy that they bring. The joy that they bring. Funding for this program is made possible by a grant from the people at Chevron and support of public broadcasting in your community.
stay right there. Another action-packed lineup of Saturday morning Cartoon Max Out is coming up next. I am Seymour S. Sassafras and Company. This is the Seymour S. Sassafras, and this is the company. <laughs> I am a peddler by trade, by trade and by golly, by golly, by golly. I deal in magic and moonbeams and pretty, pretty colors. Oh, yes, I can sell you the most perfect pink or the most blissful blue or a simply euphoric yellow. <laughs> that, of course, is why I'm here in April Valley, delivering all these colors to Peter Cottontail so he can paint his Easter eggs, you know. What? You say you've never been to April Valley before? Well, that's okay. I'll show you around. This way, please. Now, you see? April Valley's where all the Easter bunnies live and work. Oh, yes. Ah, April Valley's finest candy carvings. Meet Milk Chocolate Angelo and Leonardo the Bittersweet. <laughs> and over there is the famous Easter Bunny Bonnet Foundry. Now, of course, it's all very nice here, thanks to Peter Cottontail. Hmm? You never heard of Peter Cottontail? Great chattering chick chicks! They've never heard of Peter Cottontail! They've never heard of Peter Cottontail? Why, he's the number one chief Easter bunny around here. See? Y you, you mean you never heard how he almost lost the job? <sighs> oh, my, you actually mean you never heard how a terrible, wicked, nasty rabbit named Iron Tail almost became the Easter Bunny? <laughs> Montresor! Montresor! Away! Away! Here. If you peek into this magic egg, you'll see the whole story just as it happened. Peter was just a young whippersnapper, sort of a junior Easter bunny. Here comes Peter Cottontail, hopping down the bunny trail, hippity hopping, Easter's on its way. Bringing every girl and boy baskets full of Easter joy, things to make your Easter bright and gay. in sunny springtime right here in April Valley. The former chief Easter Bunny, Colonel Wellington B. Bunny, oh, he was a fine old gent, 
was getting on in years, and he figured it was just about time for him to retire. Of course, it was his sworn duty to appoint a worthy successor. No, it's out of the question, and I well, couldn't... Wait! Peter Cottontail, just a moment. Now, here's a likely candidate. Uh, I really don't think Cottontail's a man, sir. I mean, he is boastful, he has no sense of responsibility, and sometimes, sometimes he fibs. Oh, well, I know he's not perfect, but he's got real spunk and ingenuity. Reminds me of me when I was his age. But I, I never dreamed I'd get to be cheap Easter money. Peter, you're telling a fib. Every time you tell a fib, your left ear droops. Oh, <laughs> well, I guess I did think about the job once or twice. Uh, lots of times. Peter, good heavens, Peter, my boy, you've got to shape up and reform if you want to be Chief Easter Bunny. There are tulips that need tending and baskets that need mending. The jelly beans are piling up in heaps. There are eggs that need collecting and hens who are expecting. In spring, the Easter bunny never sleeps. There are bonnets that need sewing and gardens that need hoeing. Some chocolate chicks have broken out in peace. There are colors that are running and workers who are sunning. In spring, the Easter bunny never sleeps. Bright and early Easter morning, all the work must be done. Eggs ready to roll, in time for the fun. For I said the claws the bunny has but one single day. There are children waiting everywhere, there can be no delay. So get all those tulips tended and every basket mended. It's not a game, we're playing this for keeps. Get those bows and ribbons tied on, for you will be relied on. Every spring, the Easter Bunny never sleeps. Never sleeps. But meanwhile, far away in the distant reaches of April Valley, I won't allow Cottontail to be the new Chief Easter Bunny. I must be the new ruler of April Valley. You, sir? Yes. Years ago, a small child roller skated over my tail. Since then, I have had to wear this artificial one made of iron instead of having a nice, fluffy, white cotton tail like that beard. But it was an accident, sir. The child didn't mean to. I don't care! Since that time, I have detested all children. But then, why be Easter Bunny? To get even. <laughs> when I'm through with April Valley, we'll never be bothered by children again. <laughs> Here, son. Here is your official egg basket. Caddy, caddy it with pride. I will, sir. I hereby officially declare you Chief Easter Just a mean old minute. Hmm. Hmm. Just in time. For what, Iron Tail? Here is the Constitution of April Valley. It says that the Chief Easter Bunny shall be the one who delivers the most eggs. I know that! That's why I've chosen. Well, when it comes to delivering eggs, Peter Cottontail is <laughs> real squeamish carrots to January Q Iron Tail. I propose a contest to see who can deliver the most eggs. Yeah, it's absolutely out of the question. Wait a minute, Colonel. I'm not afraid of Iron Tail. I know I can lick him any day. Ah, Peter. This is no time for begging. No, no, I, I insist, Colonel. A contest is the fair way of deciding who's best. Don't worry, it'll be me. <laughs> well, you better head win, Peter, because once I give my word, I shall stick to it. 
Therefore, I have decided that whoever delivers the most eggs tomorrow, Easter, will be the new ruler of April Valley. <laughs> You've got to win, Peter. Absolutely have to win. Iron Tail will do terrible things to April Valley. Make sure, make sure you get up bright and early tomorrow so you can do your best. But Peter was so sure he'd win the next day that instead of getting lots of sleep, he had a big party with all his friends. And it was very late when he finally went to bed. I've got to get up on time tomorrow. Uh, 5.30, Ben. Remember? There are tulips that need tending. There are baskets that need mending. In spring, the Easter bunny never sleeps, sleeps, sleeps. But you can be certain that old Iron Hill wasn't going to play fair. No funny, no funny, no funny business now. <laughs> oh, no, of course not. <laughs> I have a little gift for you. <laughs> because, uh, well, because I like chicken so much. Ah, bubble, bubble, bubble gum. Corn flavored bubble gum. My favorite. <laughs> <laughs> April Valley is as good as mine! <laughs> you see, it was magic bubble gum, guaranteed to seal the lips of an alarm clock rooster. Those bubbles cock a doodle dooed so far away, Peter never heard them. He slept on and on and on all through Easter day. Now, nobody wanted an egg from an unpleasant old bunny like Iron Tail. As a matter of fact, though he tried all day long, he was only able to give away one single egg. However, since Peter slept through Easter and didn't deliver any eggs at all, Iron Tail won. And he now ruled April back. Every tulip that needs tending will get a proper bending, and jelly beans will rot upon their heaps. <laughs> All the hens who are expecting will get no more protecting. For in spring the Easter bunny always sleeps. And from this time forward, all Easter eggs shall be colored the shade of mud. <laughs> and new concrete. <laughs> Instead of chocolate bunnies and chicks, I commission the candy sculptors to make tarantulas <laughs> and octopuses. <laughs> and I hereby declare an end to Easter bonnets. From now on, there will only be Easter galoshes. I need lots of peace and quiet, and Easter won't deny it. Every spring, the Easter Bunny always sleeps. <laughs> Peter Cottontail, who realized that his bragging and irresponsibility had let everybody down, left April Valley in disgrace. But, but I'll make it up somehow. I'll make it up if it's the last thing I do. Make it up if it's the last thing I do. Oh, and um, that's just what Peter vowed. Remember? I'll make it up if it's the last thing I do. He walked on and on for days and days, and finally, one night, he could not walk a step further. But the next morning, 
the sun returned like an old friend back from a long vacation. And its very first rays tickled Peter's nose and awakened him. And that's when I came into the story. Uh, beg pardon, Peter. Uh-huh. You're sleeping on my big toe. You really must have been tuckered out to use a big toe as a pillow. Gee, I'm sorry, Mr. Sassafras. <laughs> well, that's all right. It's my pleasure, Peter. Well, rather my big toe's pleasure. <laughs> where are we? In my garden. This is the garden of surprises where I grow all the vegetables I use to make the pretty colors. <laughs> it's kind of magical if I do say so my magical self. <laughs> See? See right over there. There's red, white, and blue cabbages as big as houses. And purple corn stalks as tall as church steeples. Striped tomatoes and orange string beans. Why do you call it the garden of surprises? Everybody asks that question. And I answer, why not call it the garden of surprises? I mean, I never know what's coming up. Sometimes I plant beans and roses surprise me. Why, once I planted pumpkins. And do you know what came up? Huh? Uh, no, what? Pumpkins. Now, that was a surprise. Hmm. Well, it's always easier to change colors than to change labels. Well, nobody will ever be able to change my label. It reads failure. Oh, don't be so depressed, Peter. When you are depressed, it gets to be very de depressing. <laughs> but Easter's all over, and I lost. Easter over? Ah, nothing's ever really all over, Peter. Follow me. There it is, my Yes Tomorrow beer. Why do you call it Yes Tomorrow beer? <laughs> because that's what I call it. <laughs> you see, it can transport you into yesterday or tomorrow. Whereas most crafts go from here to there, mine travels from now to then, and from then to when. <laughs> Meet the pilot. Antoine? Antoine? Hello, hello, hello. A worm? Uh, pardon, monsieur. I hold the rank of caterpillar. We've got our first passenger, Antoine. His name is Peter Cottontail. Now show him how it all works. Oui, of course, I will do that with pleasure. You will notice, Pierre, the many switches and buttons and knobs. Eh? <laughs> They're beautiful, eh? They are labeled le futur and le past. Eh? And here, of course, we have more controls to transport one to the holidays. Eh? A button for Christmas, a lever for Halloween. So, Thanksgiving, Mother's Day, St. Patrick's Day, Valentine's Day, Arbor Day, and this pretty one for Easter. Hey, I get it. All I have to do is hop into the basket and have you take me back to Easter. That's correct. Then you can deliver your eggs as you should have done in the first place. Win the contest and toss old Iron Tail out. Let's go. To Easter, Antoine. Of course, we oui, certainement, Pierre. Good luck, Peter. Thanks for everything, Mr. Sassafras. But I didn't give you everything. Huh? If I could only get back to yesterday, today, Day. If I could only get back to yesterday, oh, the different things I knew and say. I'd be a different man if I had a second chance with you. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? I'd make a special plan if I had. Yesterday, yesterday, today would be a perfect day. If I could only get back to yesterday, yesterday, oh, the different things I'd do and say. I'd be so good to you if I had a second chance. Yes, I would. 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 Y
Crimson curses. Uh, I forgot all about Sassafras's silly time machine. Well, <laughs> I'll put a creepy crimp in their pathetic plans. <laughs> now, you understand my plans? <laughs> now, catch up with them, and by all means, play dirty! <laughs> are we almost to Easter, Antoine? As soon, Pierre, as soon. We are traveling 100 hours an hour. There is something is she's very wrong with the controls. They indicate a proximity to Easter, yet by my calculation. Mon Dieu! Mon Dieu, we are coming down! Prepare for the crash landing! And because the control wires were all found out, Easter was lost, and they crashed right down in the middle of Mother's Day. <laughs> Happy Easter! Easter? It's Mother's Day. You forgot us on Easter. I'll say you did. Oh, I don't mind for myself, but there were no eggs for the children. And no Easter bonnet for Mom. Well, I'll make it all up now. Here, my pleasure. Ah, uh, who wants Easter eggs on Mother's Day? And wherever Peter went on Mother's Day, the reaction was exactly the same. Antoine did his best to repair the damaged time control. It works. <laughs> and uh, I, of course, sense a holiday. No? A holiday, yes. But the 4th of July. We are falling. This, this is an outrageous situation. We are falling. This is an outrageous situation. Eh? That's what little Antoine cried out as they tumbled through the sky. Here, see for yourself. We are falling! This is an outrageous situation! We made it. That, mon ami, is obvious. Thanks, of course, to my superb piloting. A superb? We're a long way from Easter. Ah, well, tell me, Pierre. In the rules of April Valley, does it say the eggs must be given at Easter? No, but, but who wants Easter eggs on the 4th of July? And they didn't even want them on Mother's Day. Easter eggs? No. But... Uh, Fourth of July eggs? <laughs> what I am saying, mon ami, is that one sometimes must improvise. People believe what they are, still their eyes. So when you can't get it all together, improvise. When you can't get it all together, improvise. You can't tell a rose, isn't a rose. If you keep it away from your nose, it might be made out of paper mache, but it's a rose if you want a rose to be that way. Ah People believe what their art tells their eyes. So when you can't get it all together, improvise. When you can't get it all together, improvise. So give Easter eggs on the 4th of July. Put 
bananas in your apple pie on Halloween. Give your girl a valentine with a giving out that a take her in any day is fine. Oh, ha, ha. People, People believe what their hearts tell their eyes. So when you can get it all together, improvise. When you can get it all together. When you can get it all together. When you can get it all together. Lucky Mr. Sassafras packed a box full of his paints aboard. Well, look again, that is not only packed. Come see. Here's a box full of, uh, uh, how you say, the costumes, eh? Rabbit size. This is perfect. Oh, it's not that I knew what was going to happen. Not really. <laughs> well, anyway, Peter went out with his 4th of July eggs. Gee, I wonder if anybody will really want my eggs. Well, that's all, fellas. Ah, oh, it was just getting good. I'll do anything for more fireworks. Boy, I could really get rid of these if they were firecrackers. Hmm. Well, let's go home. Well, well, well. Hello, fellows. It's a rabbit. I'm Uncle Sam Sam, your Independence Day bunny. We're looking for firecrackers. You got firecrackers, rabbit? Uh, firecrackers. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, I do. These are red, white, and blue. Uh, egg-shaped torpedoes. You know, you toss them on the ground and kabloom. Oh, boy, torpedoes. Wow, we'll take all you got. Yeah, give me, let me at him. Come on, let's take him to where the ground is hard. When you can't get it all together, when you can't get it all together, when you can't get it all together, and provide. Quick, let's get out of here. Just a minute. Uh, I have not yet make finish uh, with the repairs. Antoine, we've got to get moving. Hey, rabbit! Oh, boy. These are not firecrackers. Well, fellas, it was uh, just a little joke. <laughs> we don't like jokes. Let him have it, Homer. Uh, wait a minute. Whoops, watch out. You'll break them. Come on, Antoine, let's go. Oh, I got them all back again. Serves you right for saying that they were fireworks. But, gee, I... I was only trying to win so I could save April Valley. Pierre, nothing, absolutely nothing, justifies a fib. What's the matter? We are coming down again. Gee, it's so foggy and dank and spooky out. What a terrible Easter. Easter? Even we are halfway around the year from Easter. This is... Wait a minute. I'll paint my eggs orange and black and be, uh, be the Halloween bunny. Blast that wretched rabbit. Mm. Oh, what am I worrying about? <laughs> if I can't defeat Peter Cottontail on Halloween, <laughs> then when can I? <laughs> I mean, it's uh, my kind of day. Go ahead, it's your nickel. <laughs> iron Tail. Not the Iron Tail. January Boom Boom Iron Tail. Ah, uh, Madame Esmeralda. And how is my favorite witch today? Well, Halloween's my busy season, don't you know? After Halloween, I pooped as a petrified polar guy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I wonder if you could find time to do me a little favor. <laughs> I mean, uh, there's a certain rabbit I want to frighten away. Hot a rabbit. Great. You know me. <laughs> I just love to tease hairs. <laughs> well, I... Uh... I improvise and I improvise and still I cannot get it all together.
<laughs> Come on, what's the joke? Let me in on it. What's so funny? There's no joke. I'm a wicked Halloween witch. I do simply horrendous things. I can turn blue and purple and green. Woo! I'm as spooky as Frankenstein. Hey, that's great. Uh, can you do Colonel Bunny? I can. Peter, my boy, I have some advice oh, for you. Oh, you're not supposed to enjoy my evil powers. Oh, I failed. Here I am, only 379. I has been. <laughs> uh, uh, don't, don't, don't cry. I didn't mean to make you unhappy. Uh, say, there's no rule says a witch can't have a Halloween egg. Here, you may have my first. For me? A present? Oh, I must tell the whole weirdo community. All the ghosts, witches, werewolves, everybody. They'll be so happy to receive Halloween eggs. Nobody ever thinks to treat the tricksters. <laughs> well, old Esmeralda rounded up the entire clan, and they all wanted one of Peter's eggs. Great mealy-mouthed meatballs. Ah, the skies are laden with a crazy race. I cannot let this happen. Peter will win. There's only one way to take care of those eggs. Destroy them for good. Montresa, get them and destroy them. Boy, look at all those ghosts. Yowie, I'll have to go back to April Valley for more eggs. No. Smash them, Montresa. Smash them all! <laughs> Those eggs are done for! <laughs> Those eggs are done for! <laughs> yep. Old Iron Tail got real desperate and sent Montresor to smash Peter's eggs. Those eggs are done for! <laughs> Take off, Antoine! We've got to catch those eggs before they hit the ground! Great twisted tarantulas! Hurl those eggs, Montresa! Hurl them! So, how do we do, eh? We've got to get back to Halloween so I can give these eggs to the ghost. That, I am afraid, mon ami Pierre, is impossible. No, they couldn't go back. But Antoine had to land his craft so he could continue his repairs. And where do you think they came down? Thanksgiving. Oh, just smell all those goodies cooking down there. How do I look? What are you supposed to be? Huh? An Easter turkey or a Thanksgiving bunny? Uh, who cares? As long as I can give away these eggs. Eggs? <laughs> Don't mention food to me. I'm stuffed to the gills after this Thanksgiving feast. <laughs> We're all stuffed! Everybody everywhere was so stuffed that Peter couldn't give away a single egg. Boy, it, it's cold. Thank you for this information. I do not realize this fact otherwise, eh? Antoine, look up there. Santa Claus. That's why it's so cold. But it must be Noel. Christmas Eve. These stupid controls are still all wet. Hi, Santa, hi! Hello, Peter! Watch out for Iron Tail, Santa! 
Oh, I'm not afraid. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Peter. Merry Christmas. Same to you, Santa. Hey, I know how to give these eggs away. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. I'm the Santa Bunny. Get your free Christmas eggs here. Eat them or use them to decorate your tree. <laughs> Merry Christmas. How goes the egg business? Not so good. The street's deserted. Of course. Everyone has finished with their Christmas shopping and are now snug and warm at home. Uh, you are too late again, mon ami. I guess so. It seemed like such a good idea. Well, at least I too am snug and warm. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Gee, who's crying? It sounds like it's coming from that hat shop. Gee, it's Bonnie. Bonnie bought it. She left April Valley years ago. Hi, Bonnie. Why are you crying? Oh, Peter, I'm so glad to see you, baby. Nobody wants me. What a way for a lady to end up. Wait a minute. Uh, sorry, I'm closing up. Uh, but but you, you can't leave Bonnie all alone on Christmas Eve. Ah, that ridiculous hat. Who wants an Easter bonnet this time of year? I'll take her. I'm sure I can find a home for Bonnie. You, a silly little rabbit. Whatever would you use for money? Oh, I have lots of money. <laughs> Darn it. Oh, wait a minute. I'll trade you my Christmas eggs for Bonnie. Christmas eggs? Yeah, see? In that basket out there on the sidewalk. Why, they're beautiful. Deal? Deal. Deal! Deal. Deal? <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I forgot I was wearing this Santa suit. Ah! What is it? Somebody's stealing the Christmas eggs. It's another rabbit. Careless, careless. <laughs> Mustn't let these things lie about. <laughs> yes, Peter Cottontail. This time I'm personally taking care of these eggs. Away! Away, Montressa! Away! Come back! Come back with those eggs! I do insist you return those eggs. I shall hide these eggs where you will never find them again. I shall hide these eggs where you'll never find them again. <laughs> That's exactly what our entail said, and he meant it. Here, see for yourself. I shall hide these eggs where you'll never find them again. <laughs> We've got to catch him. Pierre! Pierre! Pierre, why do you go off without uh, your friend? Hang on, Bonnie. Not so <laughs> Can't go slow, Bonnie. I've got to catch Iron Tail. The whole future of April Valley depends on it. Pierre, Pierre, come back for me. Antoine, Antoine, we forgot all about it. We must go back. But, but I can't. I can't. I don't know how to make it go backwards. Au revoir, mon ami. Au revoir. You ridiculous rabbit. You'll never catch me. <laughs> What are you doing with those eggs? Well, you know they belong to Peter Cottontail. Oh, why don't you stick to your own holiday? Hmm. Well, Santa got the egg basket back to Peter. And poor Peter, he couldn't even stop the yes tomorrow, Bill. Not even to say thank you. I sure do miss Antoine. Peter thought he'd try being the New Year's Eve bunny. 
but he couldn't bring the Estomorobile to a stop. It's no use. I'll never figure out how to run this thing. I guess we're lost. Lost up here in time. You never tried this one, Peter. It says stop. Huh? As a matter of fact, I was just about to try that button up. <laughs> How beautiful. What is it? All those heart lanterns. It must be a St. Valentine's Day skating party. Sure, that's it. Bonnie, do you know what I'm going to do? Don't tell me. Let me guess. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can resist a Valentine's Day egg. Excuse me. Uh huh? Oh. <laughs> Hi. I hate to bother you, but... Could you help me put my skates on? <laughs> oh, no bother at all. My name's Donna. Oh, hi, Donna. Oh, I recognize you from your picture in the paper. You're Peter Cottontail. Oh, no, my name's Harold. Uh, Harold Hassenpfeffer. Oh, I guess I'm Peter Cottontail. Well, you shouldn't be ashamed. Anybody can make one mistake. You just overslept. Gee, that, that, that's a kind thing to say. I mean it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Donna, would you skate with me? I'd love to. But aren't you going somewhere with those eggs? Oh, they can wait. Uh, here for you. Oh, Peter, a valentine. I'll leave it here with the others where it'll be safe. I've got a paper heart that's got your name up on it. I've written a sonnet and set it to music. My heart's the drummer, come and listen to it playing. It seems to be saying, be mine today. Be mine today. Not another day. Be mine today. For just today. For just a 24-hour day, be mine. Oh, let me hear you say that you'll be mine. Can't wait another day. My Valentine. Songs about loving or hearing the music. So I'll be yours for just today and not tomorrow. My heart you can borrow for just today. I'm yours today. Not another day. I'm yours today. For just today. For just a 24 hour. Be mine, oh, no, let me hear you say that you'll be mine. Can't wait another day. My Valentine. I knew I'd find Peter and his eggs if I just kept waiting for all the holidays. Now, let me see. Where's my book of evil spells? Here it is. Oh, that's a good one. Leave your old bunny found a spell which would ruin the eggs for good and make them so that no one would ever want them. He turned them all green. Oh, and were they ever green? A real greeny green. All the way through, the shells were green, the yolks were green, even the whites were green. Naturally, nobody at the Valentine party wanted green eggs. Even Donna gave hers back. So poor Peter and little Bonnie were forced to move on to the next holiday. George Washington always had green eggs. Why, they were traditional at Mount Vernon uh, when he chopped down the uh, uh, lime tree, uh, remember? Washington couldn't tell a fib. I can't say the same for Georgie Bunnies. Oh, Peter, you've just about run out of holidays. And it's all my fault. If I didn't go to that party in the first place, I wouldn't have overslept. And if I didn't tell so many fibs, lots of people would have taken my eggs. But now it's hopeless. Who, who wants green eggs? Oh, Peter, Peter, the most important thing is that you just don't give up hope. In the puzzle of life, there is one piece that keeps it 
together It's the hard one to place And the best one to chase The stormy weather In the puzzle of life There is one piece that keeps it from breaking You can tell when it's there From the sound that your own Heartbeat is making If you find that it's lost Well, the puzzle cannot be completed For that piece is called hope And without it our cause is defeated When you're lost in the maze Of the tricks that life plays Be reminded In the puzzle of life Hope is there, listen close And you will find it Music. Gee, Mr. Sassafras is right. I vow that if only I can find a way to give my eggs, I'll never, never, never tell another thing. And I'll always tend to my duty before pleasure. I promise. I promise. It's some kind of a parade. Must be another holiday. But who, who would want green eggs? Huh? But holiday? Oh, must be safe. Pa pa What's the matter? Is your talker stuck? Oh, Bonnie, Bonnie, me prayers have been answered. Glory be in Begora. Tis St. Patrick's Day. Sure and tis me himself, the Blarney Bunny. Get your Paddy's Day shamrock eggs right here. Free for the asking they are, and as green as the Emerald Isle all the way through. And that, for once, is no fib. Well, Peter Shamrock Eggs were the hit of the St. Patrick's Day Parade. And needless to say, Peter won the contest finally, hands down. Peter Cottontail, you have shown great ingenuity. Oh, that's what Colonel Bunny said. Here, see for yourself. Peter Cottontail, you have shown great ingenuity. And therefore, <laughs> you have won the right to be official chief Easter Bunny. <laughs> And on Easter morning, Peter was off again. Only now, he was the Easter Bunny. All of his friends turned out to greet him, because everybody knew that Peter Cottontail was on his way. Here comes Peter Cottontail. Hoppin' down the bunny trail, a hippity hoppin' Easter's on its way. Bringin' every girl and boy, baskets full of Easter joy, things to make your Easter bright and gay. He's got jelly beans for Tommy, colored eggs for Sister Sue. There's an orchid for your mommy, oh, and I an Easter bonnet too. Oh, here comes Peter Cottontail, hopping down the bunny trail. Hippity hoppity happy Easter day. Pierre! Listen, Pierre! Antoine! Antoine, where are you? Up here! Look what has happened! How do you like my new Easter outfit, eh? <laughs> well, I went to sleep for a few months, and when I wake up, voila, I was butterflied. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you can help. You can all help everybody. Here comes Peter Cottontail, hopping down the bunny trail. Look at him stop, listen to him say. Try to do the things you should. Maybe if you're extra good, here roll lots of Easter eggs your way. You wake up on Easter morning and you know that he was there. When you find those chocolate bunnies, that is 
hiding everywhere. Oh, here comes Peter Cottontail, up and down the bloody trail, hippity hoppity Another action pack lineup of Saturday morning cartoon max out.
Easter special. Easter, so let's get with it. Hey, 
Hey, man! Did you see that? Hey, grab the rabbit! Don't let him get away! Who turned out the lights? Instead of splitting after hairs, you better be decorating eggs. That's why I'm chasing the bunny. Bunnies lay Easter eggs. Dumb Donald, that's really dumb. Everybody know Easter bunnies lay little chocolate bunnies. That's how come they're in a supermarket. You dudes are missing the point. The reason for eggs and bunnies is to symbolize the real meaning of Easter, new life and rebirth. I've been thinking we ought to do something in the spirit of Easter. Like what? Well, how about giving some new life to Mudfoot's place? He really has nobody, and he's always come through for us. Yeah, and Dumb Donald, you can bring that egg land rabbit of yours. Maybe you can get him to hatch out a can of paint. <laughs> hey, 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 we'll be on our way to Mudfoot's right after the Brown Hornet. Yay! It's not a bird. It's not a bee. It's the brown hornet. Yeah! Well, I can't wait to get to Armelo, Tweetabelle. Yay, Stinger! The biggest Easter egg hunt in the galaxy! Wow! And do not forget who is going to be Grand Marshal for the festivities, that ever witty and charming superhero, me. This is Seymour of Omello calling the Brown Hornet. We need your help, Brown Hornet. All our Easter eggs are right. We've lost transmission! Brown Hornet calling Omello. Save your breath, bumbling Hornet. I, Kaznak, now have control of the airwaves. Now let me lay one more on you, Brownie. I just jammed your control. Whose controls? My superhero intuition tells me Kaznak is not a nice man. Are you all right, Brown Hornet? Any landing you can walk away from is a good one. So, so who's walking? Who's walking? Brown Hornet, you must help us. Kaznak has stolen our Easter eggs. Without them, there will be no rebirth of spring. Yeah, we will have a year of winter. Fear not. I, the Brown Hornet, fearless superhero, shall retrieve the Easter eggs from Kaznak. Well, Bombastic Hornet, let's see if you can handle a little magic as well as you can give speeches. There's Kaznak's fortress! Time for the Easter eggs to hatch is running out. I wonder what Kaznak is up to. Perhaps Kaznak realizes that he is dealing with the most famous superhero in the galaxy. And a dash of toadstool! Voila! That should do it. <laughs> right. I just had this cape pressed. <laughs> you think I added too much eye of Newt? It's time to take this storm for a ride. Look! See? I did it again. Your spring is saved. First, we must save Kaznak. Uh, but the time for hatching our Easter eggs. We'll lose the spring. Years of winter are not worth a man's life, even Kaznak's. Spoken like a true amateur superhero, Seymour. Perhaps my super speed can accomplish both feats. <laughs> Hey, 
Thanks for saving Kaznak. But it's too late to hatch the eggs. <laughs> Wait a minute. You mean the Omelians gave up their spring to save me? I've been wrong. I felt it was the wizard's job to be evil. Is there something I could do? I could bring spring to Amalo by magically hatching the eggs. Amalo, from this day forward, I vow to be the most kind and benevolent wizard that ever lived in the universe. That is just the way I planned it, Kaznak. I knew even a mean and rotten villain like you could get the Easter spirit. Yeah! Oh my God. What's this? To whom it may concern looking for me. If the wind blows this note away, remember, I'm at the store, signed Mudfoot. This is great. He'll even be surprised. You've been trying to get up in the world, Rudy. So I'm going to help you in your climb. Start climbing. Put some paint above that window there. I'll just put this mattress here so no one will get hurt. Rudy, you've done it again. A little of this old loo stuff will grease the way for some Rudy-style fun for all the guys. <laughs> hey, kids, what you up to? We thought we'd surprise you with a little Easter spirit cleanup. Well, that's mighty nice of you guys. To remember me at Easter time, that reminds me. I got a leak in my bedroom. I'll just check those shingles. Oh, no. Hey, Mudfoot, not you. Oh! Oh, my boy. Mudfoot, Mudfoot, do you hear me? Mudfoot? Oh, Mudfoot. Oh, no. Uh, Fat Albert, I got a question. What's gonna happen to Mudfoot? That's a good question. I wish I had a good answer. Rudy, you look bad. Poor Mudfoot. Oh. Don't take it so hard. Uh, promise you won't get mad if I tell you something. It take an awful lot to get me mad. This time, I think I got what it takes. Uh, I was just trying to play a little joke. Oh, and I put some grease on the ladder. That's why Mudfoot fell. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I put a mattress there so nobody would get hurt. Cool it, Russell. Let's go. Standing here arguing isn't going to do my foot any good. Uh, excuse me for protruding. 
But we're here to see Mr. Mudfoot Brown. What room is he in? Room 207. Children aren't permitted to visit without an adult in charge. Children? Children. We gotta see Mudfoot somehow. Yeah, but how? I got the way to see Mudfoot. Everybody under here. I don't understand it, nurse. He just doesn't seem to want to live. I want you to stay with Mr. Brown, and I'll be back to check on him in 30 minutes. Yes, doctor. What are you kids doing here? Mudfoot is our friend. We came to see how he was doing. Your friend has been hurt seriously. We're doing everything we can for him. There's really nothing you can do here. Let's go back to Mudfoot's place. I want to talk to you dudes. I don't want the gang to find me here. Hey, man, what are you blocking us for? We got bad yeah. vibes here, yeah. man. We don't wanna... Now, I know how you all feel, and Mudfoot's my friend, too, but the best thing we can do is keep in the easy spirit and clean up Mudfoot's place for when he comes home. Water and Power, Gas Company, Insurance, Acme Mortgage Company for Mudfoot. Oh, man. We gotta help Mudfoot with these bills. But how? Well, there's all kinds of jobs we can do. Walking dogs, cutting lawns, running errands. Yeah! Yeah, man! Yeah, we'll get the right. yeah, school, school to help! School to help, yeah! The bills! That's what I can do for Mudfoot? Hey, 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 let's scrub away, cause Mudfoot's got lots of bills to pay. I'm gonna skate through the slush. Be careful not to fall off. Me, the Peggy Flemings of North Philadelphia? Why? Hey, man. Wow, this is cold, man. I thought you guys are supposed to be working. If you ask me, you cats are all wet. Another thing. <laughs> Just don't stand there. Hand me my rubber duck. One thousand four hundred seventy. One thousand four hundred seventy-one pennies. Maybe I would be able to buy the whole hospital with that money, me. I can see you don't know nothing. That much money. Well, only by the top floor. Hey, what's that? Let's get it down here. <coughs> Fat Albert, you got too much balance to get that high off the ground. <coughs> Kylie, step back, rookies. JC, just class. Wow! We ain't done yet. Look. Man, I ain't seen that much money since the armored car accident. Let's see where all this green came from. Dear Mudfoot, here's something to help you with your hospital bill sound. Anonymous. I don't know nobody named Anonymous. 
There ain't nobody named Anam Anus. That means the dude who gave the money don't want you to know his name. There's something awful familiar about this handwriting. I don't get hurt. I just cause hurt. What are you doing here, Fat Albert? I'm looking for you. I was wondering if you knew anybody named A Non A Mus. Does the gang know I put the money in the can? No, just tell me. Mr. Rudy, I know how you must be feeling about Mudfoot. What you did was a dangerous stunt, but you didn't want to hurt anybody, right? What difference does that make? Mudfoot is bad off, and I'm the reason. I hope I can at least help with the bills. You're not gonna help anything if you get hurt, Rudy. This is a dangerous place to work. I don't care about me. Young man, you must be accompanied by an adult. I can't stop now. Disk is a basket. I do fill up a basket. Are you all right, Doctor? Oh, it's nothing, nurse. Just a fractured thermostat. <laughs> My foot, it's me. Fred Albert. Fred Albert? Hey, hey, hey. What you say? Um... Hey, Mudfoot, you're looking pretty good. I bet in a couple of days you'll be going back to the park. The only park I'm going to is the memorial. No, no, don't talk like that, especially at Easter. I'm too old and tired. I've seen my last Easter. Uh, uh, you, you, you always watch the Brown Hornet, don't you, Mudfoot? Yeah. Huh? Well, remember the time the Brown Hornet went to go to Armello for Easter and he had to save the planet? Oh, yeah. He saved that bad dude Kaznak from himself? Remember? Oh, yeah. That's what you gotta fight, cause Rudy is like Kaznak, and if you don't get better, old Rudy's had it. I don't understand. He didn't mean to, but he caused your accident. Now he's in bad shape. Uh, only you can save him. Oh, uh, I don't, I don't want nothing to happen to Rudy. Then you've got to get well. You owe it to Rudy and yourself. Oh, yeah, Fat Albert. Push me in the mind of the time back in 1906. There was old man Bert Clemson, mean as a snake. He never had a kind word or deed for anybody. Well, when the big flood came, it wiped him out. And don't you know the whole town went over to his place to help him get started again? I remember asking my daddy why everybody wanted to help somebody like Bert. And he just said, folks just got to help folks. What? I got a surprise for you, Rudy. What foot? I'm sure glad you're better. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Mudfoot, I'm the one that got you hurt, and I can't tell you how sorry I am. It's okay, Rudy. Let's do it the Easter way. Well, all of us together, this is the time to say thanks. Not just for the bill money and fixing up my place, but for getting me and Rudy here with you. You said it, Mudfoot. Come on, dudes. Let's see. This has got to be the greatest Easter ever. Stay tuned, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. When you find yourself in danger, when you're threatened by a stranger, when it looks like you will take a licking, <laughs> there is someone waiting who will hurry up and rescue you. Just call for Super Chicken. But if you're afraid, you'll have to overlook it. Besides, you knew the job was dangerous when you took it. He will drink his super sauce and throw the bad guys for a loss, and he will bring them in alive and kicking. <laughs> There is one thing you should learn when there is no one else to turn to call for Super Chicken. Call for Super Chicken. High on any list of the world's most beloved characters stands the Easter Bunny. Everybody loves the Easter Bunny. Newsboys. Good morning, Easter Bunny. Policemen. Good morning, Mr. Bunny. Bank presidents. Morning, Bunny. Even bank tellers. What can I do for you, Easter Bunny? Hand over all your cash and make it snappy. Oh, but I can't do that, Easter Bunny. What? Well, if you can't even show a little charity to the Easter Bunny... Sure, give him the money. Give it to him. Yeah. Yes. But the bank rules say... You want to wake up Easter morning without no Easter eggs, fella? Of course not, but... You do want to wake up Easter morning. Yes, yes. He's got a gun. Let him have it, Easter Bunny. No, no, don't, don't shoot. Take the money, Easter Bunny. Thanks. And there he goes, hopping, hop on his bunny, bunny way. But all this didn't escape the sharp eye of Henry Cabot Henhouse III and his friend Fred. Mr. Henhouse, who's that next to you? Fred, don't you know the Easter Bunny when you see him? Morning, E.B. What's he got in the basket? Easter eggs, of course. Right, E.B.? Ah, shut up. Mr. Henhouse, he, he hit you. Perhaps he's been working too hard, Fred. Help! Stop that rabbit! He just robbed the First National Bank. And it looks as if he's on his way for two. But what would the Easter Bunny want with money? Finding that out, Fred, is a job for guess who? Let's see. Are you a living American? Yes. Bigger than a bread box? Barely. Then you must be, uh, super chicken? Right. Get the super sauce. I'll change into my super suit. <laughs> Here's the sauce. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You've outdone yourself, Fred. Yes, well, I put salt on the rim of the... The powerful sauce took effect, and the scrawny, underdeveloped chicken became a scrawny, overdeveloped... Super Chicken. Who the Super Coop, Fred? Roger Wilcox. Meanwhile, the large, raggedy rabbit had plundered his way through town and was now at the last national bank. Look, 
You want an Easter basket full of marshmallow chickies or not? Well, certainly, but... Then hand over the dough. Yeah, yeah hand, hand over, over the, the dough. dough. Oh, very well. Yes, no one dared to stop the Easter money. No one but Super Chicken. No one can set himself above the law, Fred. Not even the Easter Bunny. Super Chicken, suppose he hurt you. We might not get an Easter basket with marshmallow chickies. You knew the job was dangerous when you took it, Fred. Now I shall use my super myoposcope to spot his whereabouts. Hmm, where'd everybody go? I'm right here. The myoposcope must need adjusting. I'll focus on that building ahead of us. Better? Better? Better hurry up, because we're going to... Crash. Clear the bell, Fred. It's the Red Carrot Hotel. The mighty chicken had done it again. For as everyone knows, the Red Carrot Hotel caters only to traveling Easter Bunny. And there he is, Fred. What's he doing? He's he's dyeing the money all different colors. Come on. Quickly disguising themselves as eggs to avoid drawing attention, our heroes approach the bunny's door. Oh, never mind. We'll come back later. No, Fred. We're going in. Oh. Oh. What have we done? We've discovered the real thief, Fred. This isn't the Easter Bunny. It's the notorious bank robber, Louis the Laughing. Hey, you're pretty smart for an egg. Actually, in reality, I am Super Chicken. And I am, I am, I am stuck in this stupid egg shell. That was the break Louis the Laughing had been waiting for. First, he dropped a heavy steel cage over Super Chicken. <laughs> Then he pulled a lever and sent Fred into the dying machine. Oh, oh, ow, oh, oh, that's hard. You can't do that to my friend. Why not? He looks terrible in stripes. So I'll give him polka dots. Oh, oh, ow, 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 ow. Get me out of here before I'm hard-boiled altogether. Spurred by his friend's plight, the mighty chicken burst from the steel bars and hurtled headfirst into a dive vat. You're right, Fred. This stuff is hot. And now, farewell, Super Chicken, for I shall... You shall what, Louis the Lappin? I shall go to jail for about 20 years, I think. Congratulations, Super Chicken. You led us right to his hideout. I did? How? We just followed that cry in the sky. But, Chief, I haven't given my cry in the sky yet. Suffering catfish? You suppose we're in the wrong episode? No matter, Chief. I charge Louis the Lappin with bank robbery and dying U.S. currency. Why did you die that money? I'll tell you why. Because I hate the color green. I hate it, you hear? I robbed banks for 30 years, and what do I have for it? A pile of green money. So I decided to dye it. Shocking pink. Peacock blue. Chartreuse. Cerise. But a club yellow. Orange vermilion. Naples red. He may have been a bank robber, Fred, but he had the heart of a poet. And the head of an Easter bunny. Now can I get out of this thing? I don't quite know how to say this, Fred, but I think it shrank in that hot dye. It won't come off. Oh, come on! So next Easter, when the real Easter Bunny gets ready to deliver his baskets, and you hear that cry in the sky... <laughs> you'll know it's Super Chicken. And his faithful polka dot Easter egg. <laughs> While surveying the site of some ancient ruins, two young archaeologists, Derek and Margot, and their nomad friend, Moki, find themselves trapped and sinking in a whirling pool of sand. And when the dust settles, they stare up in awe at a vast chamber filled with giant relics and artifacts from another civilization. And there, at the far end of the cavern, a door with a strange inscription. All who enter these portals pass through time.
Well, at least we're lost in some place pretty. And peaceful. <laughs> and friendly. Hey, come back! Huh? Where did this come from? And what is it? It's a scroll someone's been writing on. It rolled down from up there. Come on, we'll take it back. Yeah, and maybe that guy up there will tell us where we are. And when we are. And the crowd said, Hey, mister, we found your... Whoa! Huh? There. No, here. Got it. Whoa. There's another. <laughs> we found your scroll. <laughs> we call him Moki, but you can just call him Little Mr. Graceful. I'm sorry, but everything's okay now, right? <laughs> yes, Moki. Thank you. Please, come and sit. I'm Derek, and this is Margo. My name is Mark. You had me worried. These notes are from my talks with Peter himself. My whole gospel is based on them. Your gospel? Mark, when you say Peter, do you mean Saint Peter? Well, he was a fisherman like his brother Andrew, and he was there, a witness. And yes, he was a saint. You mean what you're writing, your gospel, those scrolls? Well, are you writing the story of the life and teachings of Jesus Christ? Yes. I don't know as anyone has written it yet, and his story's got to be told. I was just writing about his betrayal, his death, and resurrection. The story of Easter. That's why I came here to the Garden of Gethsemane, for inspiration. Here? This is Gethsemane? The garden where Jesus prayed the night before he... Yes, over there is Jerusalem. It's almost exactly as it was about 35 years ago, when it all happened. Mark, will you read some of what you're writing, please? It was on a beautiful, bright Sunday morning when Jesus sent two of his disciples for the donkey, a special donkey he would ride into the city of Jerusalem that day. There it is, just where he said we'd find it. Well, what did you expect, James? That Jesus would be right about everything else and wrong about a donkey? Wait a minute. What are you doing untying that colt? Andrew, tell them what Jesus said to answer if we were challenged. The master has need of it. <gasps> oh, well, well, take him then. But I should warn you, that donkey's special. He's never been ridden. Never even been sat on. <laughs> we know. As Jesus approached Jerusalem, the city seemed to come alive with expectation. Crowds gathered in the streets and grew larger and larger. Look! Here he comes! Oh my goodness! Yes, Jesus! Jesus! Jesus. 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 He's coming! He's coming. Yeah. What is it? What's going on? Who's coming? It's the prophet Jesus! Jesus of Nazareth! The miracle worker! He turned water into wine! And fed thousands with only a few fish and a few loaves of bread! Some say he's the son of God. The son of God. Blessed be the king that comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven. Glory in the highest. Hosanna! Hosanna! Jesus! God bless you! Bless you, Jesus! 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 There were
were some in the city who did not praise Jesus. They feared him. Priests, politicians, men of power. Oh, popularity like that makes me nervous. I heard someone call him the son of God. You're a priest, Balak. Isn't that against your teachings? Yes, but you saw how excited the people were. It was a triumph, Zenal. The people dote on him. They take in his every word. The people can be manipulated, particularly by the man you serve. The high priest himself, Caiaphas. Shouldn't we tell him about this man who causes blasphemy and creates commotion in our streets? Yes, yes, of course. Oh, you're a wise man, Zeno. Come on, somebody had better keep an eye on him. What are they going to do? They felt certain Jesus would do something that would upset the most important religious people in the city. And the next day, that's exactly what he did. In those days, much business, buying and selling and lending of money, was done in the most imposing building in Jerusalem, the House of Prayer. That next morning, oh! the worst fears of those in power were realized. You have offended the house of God. Is it not written, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of thieves. Was I not right, Caiaphas? Were we not right to warn you of him, O oh, noble high priest? The people are moved by his new ideas. Blasphemous ideas that threaten all of us. His followers multiply day by day. We must do something. We can't. Not now. After the Passover has been celebrated, we'll see what happens. These leaders were frightened by the unusual things Jesus said and did. They were jealous and angry, and they began plotting for a way to get rid of him. Two days after casting the moneylenders from the temple, Jesus was dining in a small house in Bethany, just outside of Jerusalem. Thank you for the meal, Simon. Are there many coming to see me today? Yes. The whole countryside seems to know you're here. I fear for you, Master. The leaders in Jerusalem, they're looking for you. Yes, yes, we've heard. There are rumors. Judas heard. The Pharisees have given orders for anyone to report where you are. Should we leave? No. There are those who would see me. Lord Jesus, it's not a rumor any longer. The priests have issued a commandment for anyone who knows where you are to report it. And they'll be well paid. You must leave at once, Lord. Let's go. Hurry, Let's my go. Lord. Hurry. Come, Jesus. Please. Hurry. Hurry now. No, I will stay and join in a Passover Seder here in Jerusalem. You may do what you will. We will stay and celebrate the Passover with you, all of us, wherever you wish. And I'll tell you how to find a safe place for the dinner. Very well. Good. As you say. Thank you. Jesus sent two of his disciples into the city and told them when they met a man bearing a pitcher of water to follow him. Whatever house he entered, 
they were to say to the man of the house. The master asks, where is the guest room where I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples? Jesus said he would show them a large upper room furnished and prepared. And all was as he had said. So in the evening, Jesus came into the city with his 12 disciples, and they sat and ate. And everything was exactly as Jesus said it would be. So, here we are. Ah, oh, safe and sound. Shh, the master would speak. One of you will betray me. No, not I, never. Is it I? 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 It is one of you 12 who dips bread into the bowl with me. Take, eat. This is my body. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Amen. After that ceremony, the first communion, Jesus took the twelve disciples with him to the Mount of Olives. Tonight, you will all fall away. No, no never, never, Lord. Never. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Not I, Lord, never. Everyone else may fall away, but I will not. Truly, I say this to you. This very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. No! Even if I must die with you, I will never deny you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's right. Never. Yes. Rest here at the garden entrance while I pray. Please, I ache in my heart and in my soul. Stay here. Keep watch while I pray. We might as well be comfortable on our watch. Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup from me. Yet, not what I will, but what you will. That's all. You fell asleep during Mark's story. Oh, I I'm sorry, but... I... But you were tired. Derek and Margot told me you've traveled far. That's the truth, for sure. Well then, Moki, you're no worse than the Apostle Peter himself. He fell asleep, too, right here in this same garden, when he was supposed to be keeping watch over Jesus. He did? Yes. But when Jesus returned from his prayers and woke him, 
Jesus was gentle with him. O oh, Peter, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I'm sorry, Master, I... Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. No, Lord. You said he'd be here. Where is he? In the garden. Follow me. The one I kiss is the one you want. Lead him off safely. Yes, yes, get on with it. My betrayer comes. Master! Master! Judas! Take him! Stand back! Ah! No, Peter, put your sword away. He who lives by the sword dies by the sword. Don't you know that I could ask God for 12 legions of angels and they'd come and save me? But how then could the scriptures be fulfilled? Take him to the high priest for trial. charges against you. Say something. Bring in another witness. Another false witness? Yes. I heard the prisoner clearly say he'd destroy the temple we built with our own hands. And in three days, he'd put up another made without hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, what say you to that? I have one more question which I know you must answer. Are you Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? I am. And you shall see me sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Blasphemy! We need no further witnesses. What say you? Kill him! They just found him guilty, sentenced to death. Who? Jesus, the prophet. You know, you were one of those who followed him, weren't you? Uh, no. I don't know him at all. I'm sure I saw you leading him into the city last Sunday. You've got me confused with someone else. I've never even seen the man. Excuse me. Hold! Sure, you're one of them. They all speak with the accent of a Galilean like you. I've told you all. I don't know him. Let me pass. Truly, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. Oh, the poor man. Yes, he had indeed done the unthinkable, exactly as Jesus had foreseen. But the others all ran away. I wouldn't have done that. Well, that's true. At least Peter took a risk and followed after Jesus. Right, he was the only one who could be questioned. Sure, he said he wasn't one of the disciples, but only so he could save himself. And you know what else? I think Jesus knew that all along. Come on, what happened next? Yes, please go on. Well, the disciple who betrayed Jesus was, of course, Judas Iscariot. Ooh, I don't like that guy. Judas heard that Jesus had been sentenced to die. Listen to me, please. Ah, the betrayer. Don't tell me you've come for more money. You won't get it. No, I have sinned and betrayed innocent blood. Innocent? Ha! You should have known. How much was it we paid him exactly? Just 30 pieces of silver. Well, you got yours, Judas. Take it. Take all of it. The money is cursed.
The man known as Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor of Jerusalem, was the only man who could order the death sentence to be carried out. He could also prevent it. The earthly life of Jesus was in his very weak hands. So, tell me, are you the king of the Jews? You have said it. Look here, fellow, do you understand what they're charging you with? How am I to decide what to do with you? Pilot! Pilot! Where is he? Pilot! <laughs> That's those jealous priests who condemned you. But the people like you. Your entrance into the city on Sunday was quite a triumph, I hear. Wait a moment. Pilate had an idea. Each year at Passover, it was the practice to release one prisoner. He would give the crowd a choice. Release Jesus or a murderer named Barabbas. Pilate was certain the crowd would choose Jesus. He was wrong. Tell him, Barabbas, we want Barabbas. Get us, Barabbas! Barabbas, Barabbas tell him. Barabbas! Barabbas! The people have spoken! Free Barabbas! 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 Well, I wash my hands of the whole thing. He could have stopped it. Why didn't he? He wanted to satisfy the crowd. That was his excuse, Derek, but nothing could have stopped it. It was the son of God's mission to die for us all and to rise again as proof that in his death we have forgiveness of our sins. What follows is painful, but the ending, the ending is blessed above all things. his robe. Well, let's play for it. <laughs> it's mine! My God. My God. Why have you forsaken me? the Son of God. Even now, his people are putting his body in a tomb. We're certain in the dead of night, they'll steal it out and claim he's fulfilled his promise. His promise to rise from the dead within three days. So? What well, if they stole the body and told the people he rose from the dead? That deception would be worse than the first. We've got to prevent them from getting anywhere near him. Oh, I see. Oh, very well, you may have your guards. Seal the tomb. There. Now 
how we stand guard so nobody gets in or out. Three days later, after the Sabbath, the women were on their way to the tomb at dawn when... Jesus, who was crucified, is not here. He is risen. Look! See the place where they laid him. Oh, I see. I see. For 40 days thereafter, he presented himself to many people throughout Judea. with Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming up next. Easter Bunny coming soon. Today, children everywhere are making preparations for an event of world-shaking significance. The annual visit of the Easter Bunny, who will be riding into town on his now famous steam engine Easter Sunday morning at quarter to dawn. Informed sources report that legions of junior citizens are straightening their bonnets, shining up their shoes, and making monumental vows not to peek when the bunny hides the eggs. Meanwhile, letters by the thousands have been flooding postal facilities all over the world. Hello! Easter's coming, Easter's coming, Easter's coming, Easter's coming. Well, hello there. Great to see you. It sure is. How have you been? Great. Terrific. Wonderful. Well, as you can see, I've come up in the world. I don't travel by putt-putt anymore. I've got my very own train. Oh, you all know Chugs, don't you? He's the famous little engine who could. How'd you do? How'd you do? How'd you do? Shh. Well, this time I've got a load of Easter eggs jelly beans, and of course, tons and tons of mail. All for the Easter Bunny. Why, he gets almost as much as Santa. And every year, they're the same. Some children ask for colored eggs, others for toy bunnies and candy. 
but a lot ask questions, like this one, for instance. I bet one of you wrote it. Why do we color eggs at Easter? Where did the Easter Bunny come from? And why does he hide eggs? My turn. Who made the first chocolate bunny? And the first stuffed toy? And why? Why does everyone get new clothes at Easter? Why are Easter flowers called lilies? Now, hold on, hold on. If you really want to know, I can tell you. He certainly can. He certainly can. He certainly can. See? I'm an old friend of the Easter Bunny. So, you come right along with me while I tell you all about it. All about it. All about it. Hey, the sun's about to come up, and that means just one thing for sure. The Easter Bunny is coming to town today. Here's hoping he's hippity-hopping your way. So straighten your bonnets and shine up all your shoes. And hurry, there's no time to lose. The Easter Bunny is coming to town today. He's riding an engine instead of a sleigh. Don't blink for even a second or he'll be gone. He puffs in at quarter to dawn. He'll be filling Easter baskets. He'll be rolling eggs like mad. Green in everything that's winter clad. The Easter Bunny is coming to town today. Here's hoping he's hippity hopping your way. So get your brushes and paints, give him a hand. It's Easter. So you want to know all about the Easter Bunny, huh? Well, oh, I'll just set the throttle on the remote control. You'll be okay, won't you, Chugs? You know I will, you know I will, you know I will, you know I will, you know I will. You know I will. Well, it all began many years ago, far, far away, way over on the other side of Big Rock Mountain. There, settled snugly in the little valley, was a fantastic village known as Kidville. Now, the reason it was known as Kidville was because no one but children lived there. A spunky, brave, ragtag little community of young fellas and girls. And no grown-ups at all. Why, there was a kid mayor and a kid policeman and firemen and even a kid mailman. <laughs> yep, that's me way back when. That's how come I know this story so well. Not one grown-up in the whole shebang. See, all the children were orphans. And they had gathered together in this remote little valley, cut off from the rest of the world by Big Rock Mountain, to make a life for themselves. Sometimes it was lonely, and sometimes it was scary. Like when big old Gadzooks rumbled around the mountain to bother them. Gadzooks, a giant bear who lived in a lonely cave on Big Rock Mountain. He'd usually show up on holidays, and if it was Christmas, he'd take all the kids' toys. If it was, say, Halloween, he'd take their pumpkins. And if it was somebody's birthday, he'd take the cake. Yes, sir. But aside from the problems with Gadzooks, it was a pretty good life. Kind and peaceful and sometimes full of fun. Everybody shared everything and worshipped the Lord in their own way. That's how they found the bunny rabbit. It's a baby bunny. <laughs> we won't hurt you, little fellow. Are you alone? <laughs> Where are your parents? <laughs> you have no mommy and daddy? <laughs> are, are, are you an orphan too? <laughs> Just like us. Aw, poor little thing. <laughs> what do we call him? Do you have a name? He sure likes the sun. Mm. That's it. We'll call him Sonny. Mm -hmm. 
Sunny. He likes his name. <laughs> Yay, Sunny! And so he was named after the Easter morning sunrise and the rebirth of life it represented. He was taken back to Kidville and became the town's official pet. Now, rabbits grow much faster than kids, and being one rabbit among a lot of kids, <laughs> little Sonny grew more like a kid than a bunny. But soon, he was one year old, full grown, and as bright and as smart as anybody in Kidville. He was a born leader, and that very same afternoon at the town meeting, and I say kids' bills got to expand. We've got to send the things we make to the outside world and get the things we need in exchange. What things, Sonny? Uh, well, there's our eggs. How about our eggs? No eggs in the world can top Kidville eggs. Yay! He was right. I guess those wonderful Kidville eggs were about the best ever. Big and white and beautiful. That was because of the Hendrew sisters. Three truly remarkable chickens, the queens of the chicken coop. What came first, Mr. Kluger, the chicken or the egg? Girls, if you please. Really? What a question to ask us. I mean, did you ever? <laughs> Let's tell it like it was, girls. What came first, the chicken or the egg? What a silly riddle. Just like asking who came first, the pussycat or the the chicken was first that we can through with a little Bible lesson. When Noah took the animals on the ark, that sure fixed the progression. Of what came first, the chicken or the egg? What's there to agree on? Just like asking who came first, the fountain or Ponce de Leon. There was no egg aboard that ark, just a Mr. and Mrs. Chicken. When the water dried up, they hatched an egg that should make the plot unthicken. How about what came first, the chicken or the egg? What a crazy query. Just like asking who came first, the cow or Mrs. O'Leary. Yeah! What came first, the chicken or the egg? Now it's not a mystery. The chicken was first, the egg was last. And as Rick What are you doing? Who's gonna eat all those eggs? Make mine three minutes. Oh, what am I saying? Oh, my. I can't bear to watch a month's work boiled. Oh, I'm boiling them so that they won't get broken on the trip over the big rock mountain. Solid, man. Exactly. And the next day, bright and early, he set off to spread the good word about Kidville to the outside world. It was Easter morning, just one year after he had been found. Farewell, kids. I'm off to, to... Where? Where? Uh, well, I'll find something. Farewell. Bye. Howdy, neighbor. Who, who are you? Hallelujah's the name. Hallelujah H. Jones. I'm Sonny. Clever name. Where are you bound? Uh, I don't know. Been there a lot of times. <laughs> Best part is you never have to worry about getting there on time. Well, maybe you can help me. I've got to find some place to sell these eggs. Well, I just come from a burg. Yes, yes, sir. Them eggs would sure go big over there. Where? Oh, way over to other side of Big Rock, a place called uh, Town. Town? Just. Town? Well, it's either town or town town. Can't rightly remember. But I do remember there wasn't an egg to, st uh, to buy anywhere. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Hallelujah. Uh, where are you headed? Uh, where'd you say you just come from? Kidville. Well, then, that's where I'm headed. If you ain't there, they got room for one more. <laughs> Well, it was quite a climb over that mountain, and just as Sonny got to the top... Oh, no! Get 
Gadzooks! Gadzooks! It was Gadzooks. Gadzooks! I want to make... Sonny kept on hopping down the other side of the mountain, right up to the gates of town. Town was the most dismal, unpleasant place Sonny had ever seen. Nobody laughed. Everybody dressed in black, and pretty flowers were against the law. Excuse me, sir, but where are the children? Shh. Oh, children are against the law. As soon as a little boy or girl gets born here, the whole family's got to move away. That's terrible. Shh. I agree. Who makes these laws? Shh. Him and her. King Bruce the Frail, only seven years old, and his aunt, the Dowager Duchess Lily Longtooth. He was the king, but it was Lily who really ruled town. But, but, must I, Aunt Lily? You will do as I tell you. Eat your beans. That's all anybody eats in this kingdom. Beans, beans, and more beans. I think beans are sufficient. And what I think is so. Now eat your beans. You must set a good example to your subjects. Remember, you are king. <laughs> I don't want to be king. I want to be just an ordinary kid, like everybody else. You'll stay king and like it. <laughs> your majesty. No wonder Hallelujah said those eggs would be a hit here. Now, of course, the whole problem was getting those eggs past Gadzooks. It was old Hallelujah Jones who came up with the solution. See? They're disguised. That dumb old bear won't know what they are. The first colored Easter eggs. The very first. <laughs> Little Sonny had no idea he and Hallelujah were starting a tradition. And so he started over that mountain again with a fresh supply of disguised eggs on his way back to town. <laughs> Gadzooks! Any more regs? Funny! Rabbit! Oh, let me tell you, little Sonny was in lots of trouble. Lots of trouble, lots of trouble, lots of trouble, lots of trouble, lots of trouble. Any more regs? No, nothing but a lot of colored stones to sell as paperweights. Gadzooks, what do I want with stones? I live on Big Rock. Rabbit, I want eggs. You go back and get me eggs. Uh, some other time. Bye. Gadzooks. That ain't the way to kid Bill. Can you come back here? Rabbit! Who, 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 who goes there? Me, sir. Uh, happy Easter? Well, uh, what is this? Well, I guess you'd call it, um, uh, an Easter egg. Easter egg? Yeah, one for you, too. Easter eggs? Yeah. And that was the first time anybody ever called them that. Why not give it a try? Peel one and take a bite. Not me. I'm not gonna be first. Doesn't look like it would taste good anyway. Yeah, me neither. Well... If everybody felt that way, we'd probably still be eating leaves and flowers. Somebody has to be first, you know? The first man to eat an oyster, to his great shock he found a pearl. 
the first man to shine that rock up found the best friend of a girl someone's gotta be first all things gotta be faced someone's gotta brave the worst someone's gotta take a taste the first man to eat a pickle said this cucumber's rather dill the first man to find a salt mine thought the worth of it was nil someone's gotta be first all things gotta be faced someone's gotta brave the worst someone's gotta take a taste the first man to eat potatoes he stumbled on the basic root said the first man to eat an onion what a strange, peculiar fruit. Someone's gotta be first. All things gotta be faced. Someone's gotta break the worst. Someone's gotta take a taste. Mm, delicious. Someone's gotta take a taste. Well, the citizens of town were delighted with the Easter eggs. But why didn't he hide them? I thought he always hid them. Hiding them came later. Now, don't get ahead of the story. Of course, no one was more delighted than little King Bruce. Wow! What is it? An Easter egg. Why Easter egg? Well, because it's got springtime colors, and I'm giving it on Easter. Well, if this is an Easter egg, you must be the Easter Bunny. <laughs> well, nobody ever called me that before. Sure they did. Who? Me, and I'm the king. What I say goes. <laughs> okay. I hereby dub you the Easter Bunny, Royal Knight of the Rainbow Eggs. And that's how he got his name and rank. Oh, that's how. What do you do with these Easter eggs? Eat them. Just like an ordinary egg? Well, I guess they're not ordinary. I guess there should be a sort of a ritual. What ritual? Uh, good question. Let's see. First, you hold it up and look at it. And then you say, Ooh, isn't that pretty? Ooh! Isn't that pretty? Yeah, then you sort of look concerned and say, seems a shame to eat it. Seems a shame to eat it. Uh-huh, then you kind of think it over and you say, heck, that's what Easter eggs are for. Heck, that's what Easter eggs are for. <laughs> yeah. That's just the way it always happens at my house. Mine too. Then you sort of peel the colored shell off, and if you're a real Easter egg expert, you keep it all in one piece. I'm an expert. I'm an expert. Now do we eat them? Not the whole darn thing at once. First you kind of nibble at the white. Then, when you got nothing left but the yolk, you sort of consider it, study it. Sniff it a little. <laughs> Wonder about its magic and color and... Ooh, down it goes. Ah, delicious. Ah, delicious. And that's the traditional way of eating an Easter egg. Starting now. Someone's gotta be first. All things gotta be faced. Someone's gotta brave the worst. Someone's gotta take a taste. What's going on here? Oh, hi, Aunt Lily. You want an Easter egg? We've got loads of them. Let me see those. Oh, what vulgar colors. Wait a moment. This is a real egg. You know that beans are the only food allowed. Uh, this is Sunny. 
the Easter Bunny. Your ladyship? <gasps> a rodent! A hairy little animal in the king's chambers! <laughs> you must pass a new law immediately. All eggs are illegal, and Easter eggs are expressly forbidden. <laughs> no! No! Immediately. So be it. What? So be it. And now, Your Royal Majesty, you will go to bed without supper. Yes, Aunt Lily. <laughs> Sorry I made you miss your supper. Aw, oh, that's all right. It was going to be more beans again anyway. Maybe when I come back next Easter, I could bring some beans. A very special Easter beans. Sonny kept his word. And for months and months, he labored with Herbert the Baker and Hallelujah Jones, trying to make an Easter bean. Oh, they had many failures. But then one day... It's done! Hallelujah! Let's see. Easy now. Easy now. Mmm, delicious! Mmm, delicious. Mmm, mmm, delicorous! <laughs> Why, do you know what they'd gone and invented? Jelly beans! Right! The world's first Easter jelly beans. <laughs> well, Easter was only a little way off, and the Hendrews sisters had to make lots of new Easter eggs. On the day before Easter, Sonny started out for town again. Eggs and jelly beans, eggs and jelly beans, eggs and jelly beans, eggs and jelly beans. <laughs> Oh, of course, wouldn't you know old Gad Zooks met him again? Rabbit Gad Zooks. Let me see that. Gad Zooks, give them back to me, please. Bah, more colored stones. I hate colored stones. Rabbit. All their hard work for nothing. Well, Sonny and his friends thought they'd lost all those colored eggs. They were pretty down, let me tell you. Pretty down, 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 pretty down. Pretty down, pretty down. But when they got close to Kidville, they were surprised to hear... I found one! Me too! I got a green and pink one. I got a blue. What's, what's going on here? Why, they're having the time of their lives. Those eggs came a-flying out of the sky and hid themselves good and proper. So everybody in Kidville came out here to hunt them up. <laughs> <laughs> the kids are having so much fun looking for the eggs. I think that from here on in, I'll always hide them. Oh, so that's why he hides them. That's why. Now, Sonny realized he'd have to do something to get past old Gad Zooks. So he had a meeting with all the kid tailors in town. And they worked all night long following his instructions. Bright and early Easter morning, Sonny set out, this time hoping that he would run into Gad Zooks. <laughs> Soon that old grizzly had chased Sonny right up to the edge of town, just as Sonny had planned. Happy Easter, Gadzooks! For... for me? Now you can be all pretty for Easter. Honey bear, sweetie pie, sugar love. Yes. 
And that big suit of clothes for a giant grizzly bear was the first Easter outfit ever. <laughs> I can't believe you've done this for me. Why? Nobody loves old Gadzooks. Uh, that's your trouble, Gadzooks. You gotta like yourself before you can expect anyone else to. You've gotta stop your growling and smile. The sand can't run through your toes if you're wearing shoes. The sun can't shine on your nose if you got the blues. You've got the wrong end of the wishbone. And your dinner's beans and corn pone. And you think nobody loves you, but they do. Take your shoes off, friend. Let the sand run through your toes. Through your toes. Shake the blues off, friend. Let the sun shine on your nose. On your nose. Just get a thumb up on that wishbone. Put some honey on your corn pone, and I'll bet someone will love you if you do. If you do, if you do, they'll love you. They'll love you. I'll, I'll bet someone will love you if you do. You can't throw a boat upstream if you got no oars. If you got no oars, and you can't get wet when it rains if you stay indoors. If you stay indoors. Think you always get the short end And you never had a real friend And you think nobody loves you But they do Turn your boat around Let it go where it wants to go Put your hat and slicker on Let it rain or snow And then the short end will get longer And your friendships will get stronger And a lot Folks will love you if you do. If you do, if you do, they'll love you. They'll love you. You think nobody loves you, but they do. You think nobody loves you, but they do. <laughs> I feel it. I really do. <laughs> and the town townspeople even had more fun than the Kidville kids when they started looking for the Easter eggs that Sonny hid. And to King Bruce and the others, those jelly beans were about the greatest invention since the wheel. And to Linda and Herbert, it was as if they suddenly had a million grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles. It wasn't until later in the day that Lady Longtooth discovered what was going on. What's this? More Easter eggs. I don't believe it. Children? How dare there be children? Sound the alarm. Get the children. And that rabbit! Throw them in the dungeon! Get the children, get the rabbit, get the rabbit, get the children, get the children, get the rabbit, get the rabbit. Well, they got out of there just in time. We'll be back next year. Don't worry, we'll be back. No, sir, nothing could stop that Sonny once he made his mind up. As the next Easter Sunday neared, he got all of Kidville to work twice as hard making Easter eggs and jelly beans and new Easter outfits. He also had the candy maker make up a special design of his, his secret weapon, he called it. Whoa, what's your hurry? Easter's almost here. Never did see so much activity. Yeah, but I don't know. Even if we do get all this stuff into town, 
Old Lady Longtooth will just get some laws passed and all our work will be for nothing. You gotta work on King Bruce. He really is the ruler. Why, if he just take a stand? He seems all right when I'm with him, but the minute he's alone, he just can't stand up to his aunt. He needs some kind of a friend to give him courage when you ain't with him. I got it. You got what, my friend? I'm going right over to the Kidville seamstress and pillow maker. And when he set out again on Easter morning, Sonny had to take a whole safari with him to carry all the eggs and jelly beans and Easter outfits and secret weapons. Secret weapon, secret weapon, secret weapon. But when they got down the other side, on the hillside just above town... Get the kids! Get the rabbit! Get the rabbit! Get the kids! Get the kids! Get the rabbit! Get the rabbit! Get the kids! I half expected this. That's why I devised... Plan E. E for Easter. very day. Children still roll Easter eggs down the hill. Get that Easter bunny! Here's where my secret weapon comes in. Nyeh, nyeh, can't catch me. <laughs> He's hiding in that paper bag. He's inside. I can feel bunny through the paper. Back to the dungeon. Of course, when they got that sack open, they found that instead of a real Easter bunny, they'd captured... A chocolate Easter bunny! We've been tricked! <laughs> Off with his head! Yes! Hey, give me a foot! <laughs> now, you know what that was, don't you? The first chocolate Easter bunny! Sonny didn't have any trouble getting into town after that. Well, that Easter was even more joyous than the one before, because Sonny, the Easter Bunny, had even more surprises. When they got their new Easter outfits, they were so happy and surprised that they went right out to the main street and held... I know, the first Easter parade. Right. Then Sonny made his way into the palace and found King Bruce. What is it? I can't wait to see. Stuffed Easter toys, just like I've got at home. The very first ones. That's what all the kid seamstresses and pillow stuffers were working on. Now you'll always have lots of friends standing by your side when you need courage. You make folks so happy, Sonny. <laughs> I wish I could make everybody in town happy next Easter. Well, why don't you? Because I always have to sneak in, and that means I can't bring too much. I give you permission to come to town anytime, any way you wish. Don't you dare. Stand up to her, Bruce. You can, you know. You've got lots of friends behind you now. Well? I know I outrank you, Aunt Lily but I find it truly difficult to do so right now. Oh, no. I give you carte blanche. Do anything you wish, for the Easter Bunny must not come to town next year. <laughs> Well, everybody in Kidville worked night and day getting ready for that big Easter when the Easter Bunny would really come to town. What they didn't realize was that Lady Longtooth had lots of dirty tricks up her sleeve. Dirty tricks, 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 dirty tricks. Because there was so much to bring, they had planned to use gadzooks to help them carry it all. But Lily Longtooth's men had a different idea.
Well, Doc? He's broken his big toe. Gonna be laid up for a while. He'll never make Easter. But what'll we do? How will I get all that stuff to town? Say, I got an idea. Better than even a giant bear. Hey, what's that? We build a little railroad from here to town, right over Big Rock Mountain. A railroad? I'm packing my bags. Ditto, kiddo. Let's hit the road. The big time at last. Start em. Girl, please. A railroad? But how? You leave that to me. Why, I was one of the best gandy dancers of all time. That's an old expression for a guy who lays tracks. Why, I'll just send all the birds and varmints out with an SOS call for help. And all my old buddies, the best hobo gandy dancers in the whole darn world. Why, they'll give their eye teeth to build a railroad over the big rock candy mountain. Rock candy mountain? Well, to get guys to do a job like this, you gotta sweeten the deal a little. All the buzzing of the bees in the peppermint trees, the soda water fountain, where the lemonade springs and the bluebird sings in the big rock candy mountain. The buzzing of the bees in the peppermint trees, the soda water fountain, where the lemonade springs and the bluebird sings in the big Easter Bunny, you got yourself a railroad. Fine, but what do we do for a train? Why, you just go down to the train yard and hire one. But when Sonny got to the train yard, all the engines in the roundhouse thought they were too important to pull Easter eggs and jelly beans and toy animals. Oh, please. It's a very important job. Important? Why, I'm the 20th Century Limited. And I'm the super duper chief. And I deliver coal to Newcastle. Don't bother us, little bunny. Well, they had just about given up when on a little rusty siding they saw our old friend Chugs. He wasn't so spiffy in those days because he was kind of the runt of the roundhouse and everybody put him down. Yeah, he was really singing the blues. What's the matter, Chugsy baby? Got the blues? Choo-choo, baby. Just between us chickens. What's the problem? I'm sitting in the station, lonely as can be. Choo-choo, baby. Never get to go nowhere. Life is passing me. Choo-choo, baby. All I hear is secondhand news. Yeah. I've got the train yard blue. Train yard blue. Throw me down the track again. Train yard blue. Throw me down the track again. I've had the train yard blue since I don't remember when. I need to do some traveling where the sounds are new. Choo-choo, baby. Hear a different way of talking, different point of view. Choo-choo, baby. Need a wear down some of my shoes. Yeah. I got the train yard blues. Train yard blues. Roll me down the track again. Choo-choo, Train yard blues. I've had the train yard blue since I don't remember when. Well, little fella, you can shake those blues because you have got yourself a job. Choo-choo, baby. Well, Chugs got himself all polished up. Bright and early Easter morning, he reported for work. It was quite a load for a little engine to pull. It's all up to you, Chugs. I'll sh sure try. I'll sh sure try hard. 
That train must never get over Big Rock Mountain. Do anything you can to stop it. Play dirty. <laughs> All ready? Ready. Think you can manage it? Sure is hard. Sure is hard. Sure is hard. Oh, Chugs, you can do it. All you have to do. All you have to do. All you have to do. Can do. I know I can. I know I can. I know I can. If you think can do, you won't delay. If you think can do, you're on your way. With a head of steam of anything you dream of can come true. All you have to do, 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 all you have to do. If your no can, your wheels get square. Get your motor going. Get your whistle blowing. Ooh. All you have to do. 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 Is think can do. To stay on the track, keep your gears from grinding, keep a steady clickety clack. If you think can do, the signals go. If you think can do, the fair winds blow. If you keep on chugging, if you keep on plugging. To do all you have to do, all you have to do, all you have to do, all you have to do is think can do. I know I can, 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 I know I can. Where the track begins to climb, spread that melted butter on the rail. <laughs> ah, that stupid little engine will start slipping its wheels and be here all day. <laughs> Need traction. These will do. Squash the jelly bean and it's stinky as all get it. Get lots of salt. Salt? For what? For all them nummy Easter eggs we're gonna get to eat. Candid, 
Well, Lady Longtooth was beaten, and town had just about the happiest Easter ever, with kids and old folks and Easter eggs and jelly beans and new outfits and every Eastery kind of thing you can imagine. I cannot stop it. This looks as if you've started a tradition. Oh, bah. Happy Easter. <laughs> bah, Junebug. Ah, uh, Aunt Lily, why can't you enjoy? I suppose you'll banish me now, Your Majesty. No, I don't think I'll banish you. I've got something else in mind. What? Why, it's lovely. White and fresh and new. It reminds me of a far, far away day when I was like springtime before everything. <laughs> what, what do you call this flower? Why, it's named after you. It's called a lily. Oh, thank you. Thank you so, so very much. Ah, uh, no time for blubbering. Let's join the celebration down there. Let's all have a happy Easter. <laughs> It's Easter throughout all the kind of house. All right, it's party time. Whoa! Thanks, pal. Tell the president that the Easter egg hunt is about to begin. He'll be ecstatic, I'm sure. Daddy, Daddy, do I really have to wear this dumb dress? I want to do something else. Can I, can I, can I, can I, please? My daughter, Thelma. Hiya, mister. Since you're handling our Easter egg hunt, perhaps little Thelma could be your, uh, uh, special helper. Why, yeah, I'd be delighted. <laughs> Have fun, Thelma. Don't do anything illegal. Right this way, special helper. Get it, mister. This egg hunt business is stupid and boring with a capital F. So don't try to rope me into any of your crummy plans. Happy holidays to you, too. Go 
There it is, boys. The greatest house where the greatest leader in the greatest land lives. Oh, uh, we still gonna break in and steal stuff, man? Of course we are. Knocking off this joint will be the greatest. Every year, they have an Easter egg hunt where they display George Washington's golden egg. Oh, it's worth millions. Uh, you think the Easter Bunny's gonna be here too? Would you stop with that bunny thing? Put on your disguise and let's go! <laughs> I've seen better decorations at a two-year-old's birthday. How much are you getting paid? Not nearly enough. Huh? <laughs> okay, special helper. Hand out these baskets to the kids. That's what I think of your dumb, old, boring, old, stinky old basket. Oh, that's too bad. That one was yours. Here's one for you. And one for you. And one for... Wait just a cotton-tail minute. What are your names? Uh, my mother calls me Leonard. And this here is Oliver. Pleased to meet you, Pink Man. And that's Veronica. Hello. I'm sorry, you're not on the list. Maybe next year. Happy Easter. Things up. He'll be here any minute. How do you stay in business throwing stupid, boring parties? The Easter Bunny better be good, pal. That's all I can. Look, he'll be here unless he's frightened off by some obnoxious, motor mouth little kid. Okay, okay, just ask him. Sheesh. What now, man? I'm thinking. <laughs> Look, boss, the Easter Bunny. Ah, Pug, that's just some guy in a suit who's going to the party. Eureka! Yo, Louie, you're thinking what I'm thinking. <laughs> We want the bunny! We want the bunny! Everybody, remain calm! The bunny, the bunny has landed! We gotta get the egg hunt started right away. You got it? Yeah, right. Are you really, really the Easter Bunny? No, I'm Sanity Claus. Scram, kid! I'm gonna see that you get fired, mister! Uh, where do you think Washington's golden egg is, boss? Huh? Where do you think? Where do you think? Shh. We can't let him hear that we're going to rip off his egg. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. Hiya, Georgie boy. Do your thing, pug. We could make a million dollar omelet with this baby. Huh? <gasps> what you doing, mister? That's it. I've had it with that guy. Boys, fetch. <gasps> Hmm. <gasps> 
Nobody messes with the uh, Easter Bunny and gets away with it. Run for it! Hey! I caught the little noisy one, man! You and Pugnab, party boy. This little girl is my ticket out of here. This is more like it. Are you really a desperate criminal? You ever been in the big house? The pokey? The joint? I hate kids. Uh, hey, Louie, are we having a solo eclipse? Did you ever knock over a jewelry store or pick any pockets or slip anybody on Mickey or... <gasps> Can I have your autograph? Oh, shut up already. We, uh... Whoa. I know you. Your face is on every $5 bill I ever counterfeited. Mr. President. And I know you, Easter Bunny. Dedicated to the... Proposition that all kids deserve a happy Easter egg hunt. If you say so, Mr. President. Come along, then. It would mean a lot to me and your country. You got it, Mr. President. Uh, come on, kids. Wail away. Oh, nice arm, Hank. Woo. And now, hop for us, Easter Bunny. I know you can do better than that. You just need a little help, Easter Bunny. Now! Oh, go! Oh, you! Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, 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 I can't take it anymore. Next, the Easter Bunny's going to demonstrate how to eat a raw oh, oh, egg, oh, no. kids. Oh, no! Here, take it, please. I beg of you, arrest me and get me out of this costume. <laughs> I don't pay. You saved Washington's golden egg. On behalf of a grateful nation, I thank you. The honor was mine, Mr. President. And thanks for showing Thelma such a good time. It's Easter morning, and nature's springtime glory is in full bloom. And in Jellystone Park, there's a lot of activity getting ready for the annual Easter Jamboree, marking the start of camping season. The holiday celebration is being planned by Ranger Smith, who has big plans for today's festivities. So as Ranger Jackson starts to pass out the programs at 0800 hours, the last bus should pull into parking section G. Then at 0900, balloons will drop and... Ah, what's the big deal, Chief? We've done this before. Yeah, we've been doing it for years. We know the routine. The decorations are almost hung, and the truckload of candy for the kids will be here any minute. And we have the Easter Bunny suit to dress you up in. Yeah, Chief, relax. Everything's fine. Except this morning, headquarters informed me that our Easter celebration will be attended by the Supreme Commissioner. <gasps> and he's bringing his grandkids so they can have the time of their lives. I don't need to remind you the Commissioner got his job by putting out forest fires with his bare hands. And the last state park he didn't like became a trailer park. Oh, no, it sounds like trouble. Ranger Smith, the candy truck has arrived. Oh, wait, wait, there we go. Come, on, on. Come on, Ranger Mortimer. Duty calls. Mmm, chocolate. All right, Mortimer. 
This is your post. I want you to guard this Easter candy with your life. You can count on me, Chief. Mortimer, I'm over here. Oh, sorry, sir. Weren't you supposed to get new glasses? These are my new glasses, sir. Oh. Oh, my gosh. The kids are early. Oh, I've got to see about the refreshments. I'll be back to check up on you in a little while. Yes, sir. Remember, no one comes near this truck, especially Yogi. Yes, sir. Um, two, three, four. Um, two, three, four. Um, two, three, four. Um, two, three, four. When there's candy in the air, you will find who else? Yogi Bear! Yay! <laughs> oh, excuse me, sir. That is you, isn't it, Ranger Smith? Yeah, uh, uh, that's right, Ranger uh, Mortimer. Uh, you're doing a great job. In fact, so good that I'm relieving you of your duties so that you can join in on the Easter festivities. Wow! <laughs> I mean... Thank you, sir. Goodbye, Ranger Mortimer. And hello, Candy. Yeah, I'll try one of these, and, uh, and one of these. Ah, one of these, and, oh, and three of these, and, uh... Yogi! <laughs> yeah. Happy Easter, sir. What do you think you're doing? Yeah, d doing, sir? Uh, I was simply foraging through the woods for uh, sustenance when I happened upon this unattended candy truck, and naturally, I... Listen, Yogi. Today is an important day. In fact, it's the most important day of my life. My career is riding on this, so I don't want you near this truck, this area, or this side of the mountain. You got that? Yeah, yes, sir. Good. Now go to your cave and stay there until tomorrow morning. And I mean it. The Siberian Circus has been calling, and I have just the bear for them. Ah, uh, yes, sir, Mr. Ranger, sir. Right away, sir. <laughs> As for you, Ranger Mortimer. Yes, sir. You keep your eyes on this truck. Yes, sir. Hump, two, three, four. Hump, two, three, four. I don't think Mr. Ranger's gonna like this, Yogi. Don't worry, boo-boo boy. I'm only borrowing it for a little while. Besides, where's your Easter spirit? Oh, I've got the Easter spirit. I just don't want to get into trouble. Ah, uh, you worry too much, boob. Easter is a celebration. Yeah, it celebrates springtime with life starting anew. It also happens to be the start of camping season. But it's not the campers that make you happy, Yogi. It's their picnic baskets. Right you are, chum. But right now, I'm in the mood for some Easter candy. The ranger won't like you taking that candy, Yogi. Yeah, I'll only take what they can spare. Now it's lunchtime for this Easter bear. Yay! <sighs> Two, three, four, up, two, three, four, up, two, three, four, up, two, three, four. No one is allowed near this truck. But, Mr. Ranger, sir, I am the Easter Bunny. See? Big floppy ears, white cotton tail. Oh, so you are. And I have come for my Easter goodies. Ranger Smith did say this candy is for the Easter Jamboree. And you've done such a good job, I want you to have this as a token of my appreciation. Gosh, thank you, Mr. Easter Bunny. Yeah, as you can see, I'm also smarter than the average Easter Bunny. <laughs> hey! Got the refreshments, check. And balloons, check. Uh, candy, check. Bunny suit, check. So, what time do you get off tonight, honey? Morning, morning! Right here, Ranger Smith, sir. <laughs> Why aren't you guarding the candy truck? Well, sir, the Easter Bunny came for the goodies, sir. The Easter Bunny? Yes, sir. For crying out loud, there's no such thing as the Easter Bunny. 
Sure there is, sir. I saw him with my own two eyes. He had big floppy ears, cotton tail, was about this tall, and wore a green hat. Green hat. Green hat? Yogi! Gee, Yogi, I thought you were only going to eat the ones you liked. Yeah, can I help it if my tummy thinks everything is yummy? <gasps> Yogi! Yikes! Oh, no, you don't, Yogi! <laughs> He'll be ready tomorrow. His name is Yogi. Yogi Bear. He'll be in Siberia in a week. Yes, he's had all of his shots. Okay. Goodbye. Ah, uh, Mr. Ranger, sir. Uh, can't we talk this over? I'm sorry, Yogi, but there's nothing more to talk about. I've warned you that this was an important day. Not only for the Rangers, but for all those children who are expecting a big celebration. Yogi and I can fix it, Mr. Ranger. Boo-Boo, you're such a nice little bear. But Yogi really blew it this time. He ate all the candy and destroyed the Easter Bunny suit. I know. What if we could bring the real Easter Bunny to the Jamboree? I bet he'd bring candy, too. I hate to break this to you, Boo-Boo, but there's no such thing as the Easter Bunny. Sure there is, yeah, sir. Why don't you believe in the Easter Bunny, Mr. Ranger? Well, I know this sounds silly, but when I was a kid, I always wanted a double-decker raspberry-filled dark chocolate egg for Easter. But I never got one. <laughs> but, Mr. Ranger, sir... No buts, Yogi. You're on the next plane to the Siberian Circus, and you better pack your winter clothes. I hear it's 14 below zero there today. I'm in trouble. This is my only coat. Go to your cave and pack. As soon as the jamboree is over, I'll take you to the airport. Yeah, I guess this was one time. Yeah, I wasn't smarter than the average bear. I guess I really did it this time, Boob. Yeah. I've never seen Mr. Ranger so upset. I may as well pack up, too. When the commissioner gets here and finds out there's no Easter show, I'll be shipped off to Siberia along with Yogi. <laughs> what am I gonna do, Boob? Yeah, I feel terrible. Looks like the only thing you can do is bring the real Easter Bunny to the Jamboree. Ah, uh, then the kids, and Ranger Smith will be happy, and I'll get to stay in the park, and, and, uh, Well, we don't know where the Easter Bunny lives. I know. Let's go ask the Grand Grizzly. He's the oldest living creature in Jellystone. You know, Boob, you're starting to get smarter than the average bear yourself.
But it's not just Yogi and Boo Boo who are interested in the Easter Bunny. Hello, I am the Easter... Uh, uh, the Easter... Bunny! The Easter Bunny. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thanks, boss. That's the part I always forget. Yeah. Yeah! Now be quiet. I have got to think of a plan. A uh, plan about what? I have got to think about what to do with that no good Easter bunny. Oh, yeah. Bunny. That's right. Hello. I am the Easter bunny. Won't you please buy my eggs? Welcome, Supreme Commissioner, sir. We have decided that in order to meet our annual budget, we've cut back on the Easter entertainment and candy for the kids this year. We think they'll still have a good time. There, that's what I'll say. Everything's gonna be okay. I'll be just fine. Gate one to base. Ranger Smith, the Commissioner's limo is coming in. Ah! What'll I do? What'll I do? What'll I do? What'll I do? He should switch to decaf. I sure hope the Grand Grizzly knows how to find the Easter Bunny. Me too, Boob. I'd hate to think we climbed all this way for nothing. Yeah, I don't know, Boob, but I got the feeling he wants to be left alone. Come on, Yogi. I don't think there's anything to be afraid of. <laughs> yeah, why don't we come back some other time? But what about all those disappointed kids who won't have an Easter Jamboree? They'll get over it. What about Ranger Smith losing his job? So Ranger Smith retires a little earlier. What about you going to Siberia? Ah, uh, do you want to go in first, or should I? It sure is dark in here. Blessed thing, can't get wheel of fortune. What's the point of being wired for cable if you can't get wheel of fortune? Yeah, hello. Yeah, excuse us for intruding, uh, but... This is the last time I buy anything from that cable shopping show. <laughs> Pardon us, old Grand Grizzly. <laughs> Who the heck are you, and what are you doing in my cave? I am Yogi, and this is Boo Boo. Yogo and Poo Poo? <laughs> uh, no, that's Yogi uh, and Boo Boo. That's what I said, Bogey and Goo Goo. You the cable guys? Just look at this lousy picture. Yeah, no, sir. We came to ask if you knew where we could find the Easter Bunny. Lester's money? Who's Lester? And why would I know where his money's at? Ah, uh, no, no, the Easter Bunny. We were wondering if you could tell us where the Easter Bunny lives. Well, why didn't you say so? All you had to do was speak up. Oh, yeah, he lives in the North Pole with a bunch of short people. No, no, that's Santa Claus. I think Gramps is a few sandwiches short of a picnic basket. I'll leave this to me, Boo. Where is the Easter Bunny? Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Wait, now I remember. You must seek the big ears in the sky. Big ears in the sky? Yeah. What are you, deep or something? Now, get out of here, scat. I'm trying to get Wheel of Fortune Plastic Cable Company. Oh. 
Rangers, all in! that all is in order? Well, yes, sir, but a little problem. Problem? A problem? I hate problems. There better not be any screw-ups. No problem. I, I, I said no problem, sir. Good. I loathe problems. I only want to take problems and crush them in the palms of my hands. Yes, sir. Well, like I said, no problem. Good. I'm expecting a great day. There are a lot of boys and girls here today, including my grandkids, who are expecting the best Easter celebration of their lives. I know you won't let me down, Smith. I'm counting on you. Yes, sir. Right turn back! I see lots of clouds, but I don't see any ears in the sky. It's no use, Boob. We'll never find the Easter Bunny. I might as well go back to my cave and pack. I'm gonna miss old Jellystone Park, the lush trees, the fields of flowers, the picnic baskets, even the voice of Mr. Ranger yelling at me. Yogi! Not now, Boob. I'm on a roll here. I'm gonna miss... Yogi, it's the ears in the sky, look! Just like the Grand Grizzly said, ears in the sky. But it's so far, it'll take us days just to get there. Not to worry, my pint-sized pal. Where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> Yay! You know, Yogi, that balloon guy seemed pretty upset. Nonsense, Boob. He knows we're just borrowing it. Come back! Gee, Yogi, we're not getting high enough. Right you are, Boob. I know a way to make it lighter. No, Yogi, don't throw me over. Don't be silly, Boob. I just want you to turn that knob up there. Like this, Yogi? You're the best, Boo Boo Boy. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay, Boob, that's enough. Now uh, the other way. Turn it the other way. I can't, Yogi. It's stuck real. Oops. Oops? What oops? This oops. Uh-oh. Now what do we do? Not to worry, Boo Boo. Oh, I'm sure there's a limit to how big this balloon will get. Well, that's good, but what'll happen when it gets too big? Do you have any other questions, Boo Boo? Yeah. What do you know, Boob? We made it without a scratch. <laughs> yeah, looks like we scored a bunny's bullseye. Yeah, Mr. Easter Bunny. Gee, this place is a mess. If he's not careful, they're gonna start calling him the Easter Pig. I think the Easter Bunny's in some kind of trouble, Yogi. And what makes you think that, Boob? Uh, just a hunch. Um, pleh. What is that, Latin? No, upside down. Oh. Help me. Boob, he's been bunny-napped. Who would do such a thing? Yeah, I don't know, but I bet if we follow this jelly bean trail, we'll find out. Let's go. Yeah, no sense in wasting good jelly beans. <laughs> America! <laughs> 
loves to camp. I love to wake up to the smell of burning spam and powdered eggs cooking over a campfire. I love to see campers staggering out of their tents, suffering from a night of sleeping on hard, rocky ground. And that is what camping is all about. To endure the blistering hot days, the ice-cold nights, blood-sucking mosquitoes, the ants, snake bites, and the lack of proper hygiene facilities. This builds character! And so we are here on this Easter day to celebrate springtime and the opening of camping season. And so I say to you, the future campers of America, have fun! And that's an order! According to plan. Oh, you're in big trouble, Buster. I'm a card carrying member of the Mythical Creatures Anti Defamation League. Say, Polly, I think we're gonna get in trouble. <laughs> Are you thinking? I told you not to think! I am the smart one, remember? Now just shut up and eat your lunch. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hey, what do you goons got against Easter anyway, huh? I mean, what's this all about? You'd love it huh? if I told you my twisted maniacal plan, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, it's a doozy, too. <laughs> See, we're kidnapping you and stealing all your Easter eggs, so people will have to, uh, buy these here plastic ones. Thank you. Mr. Big Mouth! No, I'm Ernest, the new spokesman for our plastic Easter products, remember? Plastic? Yuck! Come on, nobody'd want plastic. Nobody should say nothing bad about plastic. Never. Oh, yeah? How come? What's so great about plastic? Because nobody wants these old-fashioned eggs. They're no good. Look, they bust these in. They're greedy and runny. And after a few days, they smell awful. You can't bounce them. Everybody took them! What good are they? They're fried, you can get it, kid. What people want today is indestructible, non-biodegradable, environmentally unsafe plastic! Yes, plastic. I love plastic. That wonderful synthetic substance. It's a perfect artificial resin compound. Pliable, malleable, sculptable, formable. It's the perfect shaping matter. It's odorless, tasteless, emotionless. It could be hard or soft. You can make it any color, shape, or size. It will never break down. It lasts forever. You can leave it in the sun and it won't melt. Try that with eggs. Low maintenance, low in calories. It's an everything substitute for wood, steel, rubber, even skin. And best of all, it's cheap. Uh, boss? Everything I own is plastic, right? Right? My factory, my shoes, my clothes. My teeth. My hair. Even my underwear. Like, right? Plastic sofas, pets, vegetables, clothes, toilets! Boss, you're scaring me. How many times do I have to tell you to be quiet when I am talking about plastic? Get out! I feel okay now. Where was I? Oh, yes! Get out! My mass produced plastic Easter eggs! Let's look at this beautiful beast! A color! Now look, 
right, but in order for people to buy my plastic eggs, we gotta get rid of your real ones. Now, we did keep your eggs. Oh, give me a break. Are you sure you're the smart one? Rabbits don't lay eggs. Yeah, I thought there was something funny about that story. Chickens lay eggs, bright boy. I just go to the magical Easter chicken and get as many as I need. Magical Easter chicken? Now we're getting somewhere. Yeah, but I'll never tell you where she is. <laughs> oh, so you won't talk, eh? To the controls! Oh, boy, oh, boy. I love to pull levers. Oh, no, you don't. You gotta be smart to pull levers! <laughs> <laughs> if you don't tell me where to find that chicken, I will turn you into a plastic Easter Bunny! Forget it, plastic boy! All right! You it, boy! Aha! Looks like we have a section 4852. Crooked hobnob on a five-inch helio snorkel fritz. Oh, look. A section one, two, three, four light bulb needs replacing. Aha! An unfiltered valve stem attached to an oversized conduit with an unlicensed converted pump. Very serious. Hey, who are you guys? Health inspectors. It's a surprise inspection. Are you surprised? Uh-oh. And you're in serious violation on lots of things around this place. Hmm. Violation 3434. Too many eggs in the air at one time. The limit's 38, you know. Oh, and what's this? Air in the plastic. Disgusting. Better take this down to the office for evidence. They got evidence, Polly. I heard, I heard. You'll be getting a copy of my full report to my... Yeah, a little health taste for the road. Hey, it's a bear! Uh-oh. Yikes! We've been fooled. Get up! Uh, hurry up, Boom. Let's hop. I got the tiny bear! Uh, I'll get the bunny. <laughs> Mangy bear, I'll... <laughs> Will you get off of me? The bunny got away, boss. Oh, you idiot. Always messing things up. Yeah, hey. Need a lift? That's one basket of goodies even I wouldn't touch. <laughs> hey! Ah, now, happy Easter to you. Gee, I feel so festive. <laughs> and that's why we need you to come to Jellystone with us. So, little Ranger Smithy was gonna dress up like the Easter Bunny, huh? <laughs> You know Ranger Smith? Come on, I know everything. I'm the Easter Bunny, remember? I mean, who do you think helped Santa with his list each year? Little Smithy always wore this funny green hat. Nice kid. Never believed in me, though. So you'll come and make little Ranger Smithy happy? Oh, yeah, I'd love to. But first, we gotta stop by the Easter hen house. Hen house? Mm-hmm. That's where the magical Easter chicken lives. We'll stock up on new candy eggs to replace the ones that somebody ate. Sounds like a great idea. I knew we could count on the Easter Bunny.
Yeah, don't worry, Mr. Easter Bunny. I, I, I'm sure it's just a sprain. Ah, it's okay. Spreading Easter cheer is a hazardous line of work. <laughs> Pull over there. That's where you'll find the magical Easter chicken. Boy, that's a long way up. You go on without me. Just tell him that the Easter Bunny sent you. We'll be back in a flash. Yeah, pardon me, sir. Yeah. Don't do that, wise guy. Yeah, I'm sorry, sir. I did not mean to startle you. What's your business? We're here to see the magical Easter chicken. Oh, you are, are you? And just how are you two planning to get in? Yeah, uh, well, yeah, we'll walk inside the... Take a look at the rules, Buster. Only the Easter Bunny can visit the Easter Chicken. No salesmen, solicitors, political pollers, fundraisers, autograph house, cookie-pushing scouts, or holiday carolers. Only the Easter Bunny. And you don't look like the Easter Bunny to me. But the Easter Bunny sent us. Listen, you clowns. If I let every Tom, Dick, and Harry Bear inside, I'd lose my job. So get lost. Ah, uh, what would you do if I told you that uh, I am the Easter Bear? Oh, the Easter Bear. Then I'd do this. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, Yogi, now what? Pooey! Yeah, don't worry, Boob. I'll think of something. <sighs> I was afraid he'd say that. I can't believe it. Those stupid bears led us straight to the chicken. Well, well, only the Easter Bunny, huh? Lucky us the Easter Bunny is right here. Uh, where, boss? You stupid! Go ahead, Boob. Cut the rope. Okay, Yogi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great, just great. Some plastic explosives, some plastic grass. <laughs> plastic. <laughs> now, remember, you go down to the hen house and leave this basket. This dynamite will take care of that chicken and all those Easter eggs. Got it? Uh, yeah. I'm supposed to go down there and then bring this basket back. Did your mother drop you as a child? Okay, from the top. Yeah, this time, you come with me, Boo-Boo. I don't know about this, Yogi. Come on, where's your sense of adventure? Right behind my sense of danger. <laughs> Hang on, Boob. Blast off! <laughs> Those were the ugliest birds I've ever seen. Sheesh! Oh, I've been crashing through a lot of roofs lately. Wow, was right, Boo Boo Boy. We've hit the mother lord of hen fruit. Wow. <gasps> you must be the magical Easter chicken. Uh, your friend, the Easter Bunny, sent us to gather a few eggs for an Easter jamboree. Could, uh, could you oblige us? <laughs> Yeah, all the kids thank you, ma'am. This way, sir. It's so nice to see you again. 
Yogi, that big dog and the fake Easter Bunny are coming this way. Yeah, uh-oh. Uh, do you think you could uh, speed it up, ma'am? <laughs> Yogi, we gotta get out of here. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, have you ever visited uh, Jellystone Park? <coughs> oh, it's lovely this time of year. Yeah, why don't you come for a visit? <coughs> the uh, hen house is in tip-top shape for your inspection, sir. You see, I run a tight ship around here. Well, everything is perfectly in order. Now, now, can I get you some sparkling water? A, a, a cappuccino, perhaps? No, uh, no, no, no thanks. I just had one of those sparkling capu things right before I left. Of course, sir. Is there anything else I can get for you? Nothing, really. I just wanted to come by and say hi. Oh, uh, okay. Hi. Hi. Gotta go! What is keeping that half-wit? Here I am, boss. The answer to your dreams. Shut up! Did you do it? Yeah, I sure did. Good. I'm proud of you. Easter will be all mine now. <laughs> it should go kabloopy any second now. Excuse me, Easter Bunny, sir. You almost forgot this. And I took the liberty of filling it for you. Oh, gee, how... Thoughtful. <laughs> hey! You're not the Easter Bunny! Say, you bears want to make it to Jellystone before Christmas? Hey, glad to see you, Mildred. <laughs> well, what are we waiting for? We got some kids to make happy! Right you are, Easter Bunny. I'm sure it's just a sprained body, Mr. Easter Bunny, sir. Oh, that's okay. The Mythical Creatures Union takes care of my medical, <laughs> but you should see my premiums. Well, at the bottom of this hill are a group of kids and a ranger who are about to be very happy. Smell honey. 
<laughs> Looks like smooth sailing from here. Yeah. <laughs> Fuse, Mortimer. Yes, sir. Oh. Smith, what in the name of forestry is going on here? You call this entertainment? You call this a show? I call it desperation. When I get through with you, you'll be. Hey, kids. Who wants some Easter eggs? We do! Mildred, get cooking, babe. We're gonna need a lot in a little time. Hey, Yogi. I don't know how you did it, but I'm sure glad you did. The pleasure was all mine, Mr. Ranger. Does this mean I don't need to learn Russian? That's right, Yogi. I want you to stay in Jellystone for as long as you like. Mr. Ranger, do you believe in the Easter Bunny now? Well, I guess so. I mean, he looks real. If it isn't Little Smithy, <laughs> still wearing those green hats, I see, huh? Well, I... Listen, now that you believe in me, I want to give you this. It's... It's a double-decker raspberry-filled dark chocolate egg at last. Thank you, Easter Bunny. I... Smith! Yes, sir. You're... All right. I'm putting you in for a promotion. I beg your pardon, sir? You did a heck of a good job. The children are having a great time. I don't know what all the juggling and cannon was all about, but my little grandkids are enjoying themselves. <laughs> On behalf of Jellystone's forest creatures, we hope you enjoyed your Easter. I did. Ah, uh, maybe you can come again next year. Well, I think I'll do that. Oh. In fact, why don't you bring your whole family? Capital idea. <laughs> what do you say, Smith? We'd be honored, sir. You've got a great park here, Smith. Thank you, sir. We do our best, but we could not do it without you. <laughs> Thank you.
don't even listen to NPR. Create your own.